Hey, are we live? Are we live on the interweb? I'm here broadcasting from the safety of my home apartment because I have urgent messages to transmit about television programs and, you know, life and yeah, stuff like that. Oh, we are live. The chat is rolling in. Hello and welcome, everybody. I hope you're all having a fairly good or pretty all right day slash night slash afternoon slash uh, in between, I guess, in between times. Um, Everybody say hi to each other. Say, you know, it's not just about me. Say hi to each other. Be like, you know, hello. If if there's anyone that you, you know, you particularly want to say hi to, you don't have to. It's not a big deal. Um, how about I check the audio? Oh, the audio is coming through. Okay. So, um, welcome again. I thought it would be nice to do a little bit of a live stream. Um, the Basically, the, the premise of a live stream is to... Uh, nice, I see some people saying hi to each other. It's to basically just get together and commune a little bit and uh, communicate, I guess. And I'm going to have an adult beverage also myself. You do not have to do that. Um, You can if you want to. I I don't know. I don't, you know, it's not my business. Um, Happy Mother's Day Eve. (laughs) Is that a thing from Arrested Development? That's definitely a thing from Arrested Development. Uh, we, we I got Chuck McGill in the chat. That is honestly kind of a surprise because I would think using the computer would not be the easiest thing. But hey, maybe he's, you know, maybe it's in remission, the EHS. Um, so yeah, so the new video, I you, you may have noticed I released a video, but it was a little short and I didn't really have enough time to say a lot of things. So I wanted to do a live stream to, you know, really say more because... Yeah, the the network w- was really sort of um, riding my riding my, I guess, ass about about this. Um, they were like, you have to, you know, keep it under three hours and stuff. So there was a lot of things we had to cut. Um, so luckily, I just made that. Uh, I just made that. You know, I was like, oh, I'll kind of funnel some stuff towards a live stream. So I have like thirty tabs open. And unless my computer, you know, decides to give up, uh, you know, we, we should have a little bit of, uh, of a live stream on our hands. Uh, how many people do we have here? 140. So, yeah. So I will say just before I get going, um, I was ref- reflecting on the uh, Verbal Journal podcast, which is for channel supporters on Patreon and YouTube members. But uh, if you don't listen to that, which is the majority of the world, uh, by a large margin, but like, uh, I was ta- I was reflecting on, it's kind of crazy. Like this video got more views than any video I've ever made, uh, in the basically three years of having a YouTube channel. Uh, and that's in under a week. I mean, now it's been a little over a week, but in under a week, the video got more views than any video I've ever made. Um, and it's now surpassed, you know, by so much like, so, yeah, it's probably how a lot of you found this channel. I mean, YouTube, so there's something going on. <laughs> People really like Breaking Bad video essays. I've, I, think I, I think I realized uh, that, that that is the case. Uh, so we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. Yeah, but thanks everybody for watching the new video and enjoying it. I mean, I obviously put, put a fair bit of work into it. Um, Breaking Bad just has so many different aspects you can analyze and I still left out so much and like even this live stream is just like you know there's always going to be so much left out um, and you just have to kind of embrace that I think when you when you try to tackle a subject you you have to carve off some pieces and I was pretty um, okay this actually brings up the first thing I wanted to ask about. I was going to say I was pretty haphazard about writing the script, but I need to ask. Okay, you all tell me. This is a little embarrassing, but I need to ask because I don't know. I got like five comments or, or ten comments s- telling me how to spell the word haphazard. Okay. 
And I know I worked on this video for like months. I cannot remember where did I put the word haphazard on the screen in that three hour video. Like I literally can't. Someone in the, in the audience here must know. I got so many people telling me how to spell haphazard. Did, is that a is that a meme or did I spell it wrong? Oh, in the description. Oh, people telling me how to pronounce it. Oh, that's what it is. Thank you. That's what it is. It's everybody's telling me how to pronounce it, not how to spell it. Right? It's haphazard, not haphazard. Wow, it's not even because I was like, I never put the word on the screen. I know when I said the word, um, uh, his haphazard risk assessment. See, I just did it again. His haphazard that Lewis messes up Walter's haphazard. Do you, you fucking people really say haphazard? Are you kidding me? No. And I'm sorry, but Breaking Bad, like, come on. Like, the, the viewership is so pedantic. I guess I really fall into that, too, in my own ways. I, I, I cannot deny that. But, like, why? I, <laughs> do people really say haphazard? Okay, whatever. I just, we needed, we needed to co cover that. And, and, and it does, I looked it up. Etymol etymologically, it does not, like, like, people are right to call me out. Like, it is haphazard. Like, that's what it is, et etymologically. Um, but... We say haphazard, like, in the U.S. Like, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure. I don't think I made that shit up, did I? Am I, like, a kid? Okay. But, yeah, that's just a thing that happens linguistically. You know, they, like, morph the phonemes and the, and the morphemes and the... <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was just people telling me how to pronounce it, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I have so many things to talk about. This is going to be a very long stream. But yeah, all in all, just numbers wise, thank you so much to YouTube for um, like stimulating this profound interest that everybody has in Breaking Bad. Um, and I guess, you know, I have a sort of unique concept in a way. Um, nobody has commented telling me a video essayist who, uh, which I don't usually call myself that, but just slipped out. Um, nobody has... Nobody has commented telling me another person's videos who, like, uh, only saw Better Call Saul and not Breaking Bad. So, they might exist, but no one's told me. Um, I do think I'm going to watch The Sopranos. Yeah, it might, be a f it might be a few months for sure, but who knows? I said that about Breaking Bad. Um, oh, my God. And when you mispronounce shit, you do get a lot of engagement. We're going to talk about more of that uh, stuff in a bit. Okay. Um, anyways, so... Very cool. Lots of people checking out the channel. It's really surreal. It's been completely overwhelming and bizarre. I mean, you have to put yourself in my shoes. Like, <laughs> I dropped the video on Friday. It got a thousand views in the first hour, which is like the craziest shit. But that's what the new videos do, the last few ones. And I'm like, oh my gosh, a thousand people in the first hour. And then it like, you know, will fade and stuff. Maybe, a, maybe peak a little bit above that and then fade. Uh, this one did do that. And then... Later that night or the next night, it was like, it was doing numbers I've never seen before. Like 4,000 views in an hour. And I'm like, I'm like, I literally like, I don't know how to wrap my mind around those numbers. And that's, it, it's just been a, an absolutely wild. And so many people don't, don't even get me started on the comments. We're going to go over some really uh, interesting comments and some critical comments. Uh, and if you're watching this stream later in the future, by the way, not live, uh, feel free to jump around to the chapter marks. And also, uh, um, oh, wow, someone just gave me $10. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you had that money to spare, you know? It's not like, you know, coming out of rent. One thing I'm curious, your opinion on Gus Fring's character arc through the series as a BCS first viewer. Um, BCS fans feel Gus's arc in BCS was weaker than Breaking Bad, but only because his Breaking Bad arc is so good. So it is hard for me to separate them, I guess. Yeah, I, but I I loved the way he sort of um. Sorry, I can't see. It. That was an alert. Um, I I love the way he's he's sort of like slowly introduced, and then obviously in Breaking Bad, like he's very suddenly taken away. But it's a very like uh, I've had people ask like about waiting to see him for a long time. Um, when does he get introduced in Breaking Bad? You do you do wait quite a while, and then Jimmy is the first person to interact with him, right? 
<laughs> I think so, right? I didn't make that up. Um, or maybe not the very first, but um, a lot of very nice comments uh, in the chat. Um, and I read most of the comments on the videos, I will say. So if you commented, I probably read your comment. Like I recognize a lot of your names and images and yeah. Which is to say, thanks for giving your two cents. Um, yeah, the end of season two in Breaking Bad. And obviously he's introduced like late in Better Call Saul. And so that's kind of cool for people who watch Breaking Bad first. You know, those sort of like... Because some people did watch Breaking Bad first, is my understanding. I'm drinking an IPA. I like I like an IPA every once in a while. <laughs> Hat measures. Holy shit. We got inside jokes already. Okay. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to, to mention... Uh, well, it's not... I don't know why I say that. I've been talking for a little bit already. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, all in all, I mean, Gus was such an amazing, he's literally a legendary character. And the fact that I had that clip in the new video of uh, Giancarlo Esposito being like, uh, <laughs> it, it would be cool to watch Breaking Bad after Better Call Saul. I mean, that's just so good. I know that sucked in so many people cause they're like, oh shit. If, if Giancarlo Esposito said that, like I gotta, you know, I gotta, I have to listen to this guy. <laughs> and a lot of people leave comments with good uh, suggestions of other things for me to watch definitely i do register all that i do want to do more of that i also want to do other stuff in addition to media analysis so it's just going to be a process you know i work full time and i want to invest more time into my work as well to do more research and uh, professional growth so everything takes a long time you know luckily i'm hiring 15 people to work under me for the channel no i'm just kidding i'm not I don't have, I'm not doing that. Um, wow. Lots of great comments. Um, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, what's the general plan for the channel going forward? Um, probably, um, I have a lot of video ideas that are like just titles or concepts. Some I've started to do research on. Some I've like written out a ton, but there's like a lot more to come. Um... So it's kind of a little bit, it's a little bit hard to say. Basically, right now, I'm just enjoying, like, really accomplishing this huge task. And, yeah, so I have a, a ton of video ideas and, like, a few different shows I might watch. So odds are, honestly, just, like, I'm going to just chill for a month. And then I'm going to be like, oh, I really want to watch, like, a new show. And I have a few ideas of what that'll be, but... I don't really want to share it. Not for any particular... I just think it's not... I don't think it's... You know, I, I don't know. If they'll, Maybe they'll get to a point where it's uh, worth sharing. But I don't really know. I have a lot of other things I, yeah, I want to think about, I guess. And But yeah, this has been, this has been really cool. But... Okay, so first uh, thing from this... Oh yeah, one thing I just wanted to mention is like... I think watching Better Call Saul first did make it so... When I watched Breaking Bad, I kind of took for granted a lot of the genius of Breaking Bad. Like, I was just like, of course it's a genius show. Of course it's, like, brilliant. And this scene as an example, because, like, just the fact that, like, they reveal his cancer inside of a story of how Skylar and Walter met. Like, like th that that's the vehicle for his cancer to be revealed. It's such a cool little detail. But it's I, I realized that, like, re-watching and working on the video... That's the type of thing that kind of slipped, like, you just take it for granted when you've seen Better Call Saul. Like, everything's going to be super deep and, like, well, sort of, like, I don't know. So, there are some parts of Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul you can definitely say are, like, too over the top or in your face for certain people, maybe. I, I don't know. Like, um, but most of the time it walks this line of being, like, subtle but also, like, really unique. It's hard to sort of, I feel like, do both of those. Um <laughs> uh so someone commented on the new video that i was wrong to say that walter w like was clearly considering cooking meth before getting his cancer diagnosis but like i was not wrong they said that they said that this scene came after this scene but it didn't i checked multiple times like he's clearly pondering cooking meth before he knows he has cancer 
because it goes this scene uh it goes this scene and then like the awkward hand job right and then like he's back at work and then he collapses and and it's this scene so i mean what do you all think of that am i like because i feel like i'm wrong i feel like i can't be but it it just seems like he's genuinely and, and everybody tells the story of the show wrong Everyone says, it literally, I was fucking reading Anna Gunn's op-ed to the New York Times, which is so powerful and really disturbing to read about her experience of, like, the the way people online treated her. Like, not even, Sky, not even Skylar, but Anna Gunn. But, like, even in her op-ed, she describes, to, tr- to sort of catch the people who don't watch the show up, she describes it as, like, Walter White being someone who, after a cancer diagnosis, starts cooking meth to leave a nest egg for his family. And I'm like, I yeah, that's true, but also, did he need to get diagnosed with cancer to do that? It's one of those things I really feel like I must be tripping out, because, like, how? <laughs> I feel like I'm wrong, but no one's told me I'm wrong yet. You're probably right, it's just that the cancer is what... Yeah, really pushes him. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And makes it more, makes it like a, I need to do it. Make Makes it go from like, I potentially want to do it to like, I need to do it. And then, you know, we can assume he like, you know, I guess did some research and it's not that hard. I, a few people commented that. I get that. I get if you like understand chemistry, it's not that hard to cook math. Like, that's not the point. That's not the point. Um... Okay, so, <laughs> okay, chugging along. Um, chugging along. So, okay, so score one for me. Uh, I did want to say it's very funny seeing, um, it's very funny seeing Saul Goodman's world's greatest lawyer. <laughs> he has a world's greatest lawyer mug. And, uh, you know, that's obviously just very funny when you've watched Better Call Saul first. I didn't really get the chance to mention that in the video, but he's, you know, Kim obviously gives him that mug that says world's second best lawyer or second greatest. I don't know. You know, who knows? Uh, And then, you know, I guess in part of his, uh, you know, grieving the relationship with Kim is uh, he actually promotes himself to world's greatest lawyer. And, well, I will say, technically, Kim was not a lawyer anymore. So maybe he was just like, hey, I mean, you know, no hard feelings, Kim, but you're not a lawyer anymore. I do. <laughs> He's like, technically. <laughs> he, like, took it really literally the whole time. He's like, yeah, no, technically, I guess I'm the world. Wow, 4 million views, Rotten Tomatoes. They don't, do they get money for that? They can't get money for that. They can't get money for this. Um, okay, wait, wait, I gotta say, I mean, yes, I fucking loved the whole, so, like, this is my favorite episode, the Better Call Saul episode is, is so good, I mean, <laughs> it's my favorite episode as a Better Call Saul fan, I don't, I'm not trying to say it's, like, the best episode of Breaking Bad, um, where's his line, <laughs> wait, Oh my God! Oh, there are so many good lines. There are so many good lines. <laughs> You're on late night television, are you? Better call Saul. <laughs> <laughs> I get it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, and then and then this and then this. Individual one. This is the best. <laughs> oh, wait, it comes right here. <laughs> I get it all the time. We're here to discuss the sale of the property at 9809 Margo. I get it. Flat fee clients, am I right? <laughs> Folks, today. <laughs> that is like. That is just so good. That is just so good. <laughs> Flat fee clients, am I right? <laughs> because the guy's trying to get him through it. Okay very funny i could i could all day you know all day i could show you saw lines that crack me up um where's this oh they don't have it in this compilation oh it must have been somewhere else um 
Yeah, so this this blue thing is for the for the plane crash or is this when does this scene take place? I hate when they don't say. As a someone who makes videos, if you post something on online, you have to say what episode it's from like in the description. Um s- whatever. But that's what that is, right? Cuz that's Saul wears like it's the same one, right? Yeah, for the uh for the plane crash. Yeah, the Jesse's house thing. Yeah, it's, the, it's after the plane crash, right? Oh, this is so fucked up, though. I have to say, like, I wasn't planning on going on about this. But, like, I mean, Jesse is essentially <laughs> robbing his parents of hundreds of thousands of dollars. I guess they're wealthy. But, like, they're not. I don't know that they're that wealthy that, like, robbing them of, like, several hundred thousands of dollars <laughs> Because they put all that money into the improvements of the house and then Jesse's like, uh, like you know, pulled this whole thing with Saul to, to buy it at a cheaper price. Yeah, he didn't have the money. Okay, cool. Wendigoon? Wait, isn't that a... And make sure to leave a like and subscribe! Wait. Wendigoon, aren't you like a huge... YouTuber? Whoa. Thanks for checking out my... I'm going to subscribe to you. Um. Wow. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Welcome and thanks for supporting. Yeah. Wow. Um, I did actually get... I think I, I, I've been meaning to check out your videos because I got like one or two comments saying, you know, you know how YouTube commenters can be. A few people uh, saying that I, I reminded them of Wendigoon. And, uh, you know, I, I just... I don't look up every... I don't, I don't look deeply into every everything that uh, people mention, but I've been meaning to check out your videos. So, wow, thanks for supporting the channel. Um, okay, so... Other... Oh, yeah, so, yeah, robbing your parents of a few hundred grand, not a very, not a very cool move. Jesse's a complex guy. Yeah, there's the ribbon. There we go. Oh man, what a look. What a look. Um, your videos about BCS and BB are phenomenal. Excited to see more. Great. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. That really means an enormous amount. And uh, yeah, thank you. I'm going to definitely check out your work because you're highly respected on the tube. Um, and I honestly don't watch enough <laughs> YouTube videos. <laughs> like I do, but I don't know. I like waste time. I got to like watch more like quality YouTube videos. I don't know. My attention span. I am trying to read more too, so that's good. Anyways, let's um Yeah, anyway, so I did I did give my opinion about Better Call Saul being superior. Leave me alone. Um Leave me alone. it did Leave seem alone. like people appreciated that. You know, some people obviously didn't, but uh Yeah, people you know, some people really came out of the woodwork and were like, "Hey, you know, I like Better Call Saul more too." And I was like, you know, in my mind, I was like, "Hey, that's awesome, you know. Good for you." But at the end of the day, I'm not, when I say that, I'm not putting Breaking Bad down. I'm just telling you about myself. I'm saying like, oh, you know, I like apples more than orange di- oranges, basically. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to make it. And then I got a few comments. This is great. I'm just riffing. I have a ton of things I plan to talk about. I got a few comments, say, uh, you know, responding to my, my statements about like objective quality in art and stuff. And a few people saying, of course you can determine objective qualities in art. But they seem to be like kind of twisting what I was saying a little bit because, I mean, there are objective qualities. I just don't know when you look at two things with a ton of great qualities, I don't know that there's an objective process to determine superiority and and inferiority. You can look at a, a certain quality and like kind of assess how a show maybe performs uh, that quality, I guess, but... At the end of the day, when there's so many positive qualities of both shows, I don't know that there's some system for determining which is better. I, I don't want to live in a world where there is, I guess. Um, I actually don't have meme videos on the ready. Yeah. Um, but I was going to do that. Fuck, I should prepare that. Okay. Um, oh, I do want to thank... I don't know if this person is here right now. I don't think I've seen their name in the chat. But... the. <laughs> There was a there was a user named Laura, just simply Laura, 
who uh, suggested the name for the YouTube video. And I just look, I'm not, I'm going to be, I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Thank you, Laura. It was at two hours, 14 minutes and 20 seconds in the last live stream. Um, you can't see the live chat <laughs> because I showed some clips that like broke copyright and then now the whole fucking YouTube is the worst streaming platform ever. So if you, if they have to adjust your stream cause you broke copyright, then they also make it so the chat just doesn't show for the entire stream. Unless there's some way to fix that, that I don't understand. <laughs> um, I've never seen twin peaks. Um, Um, so yeah. Okay. So anyways, thank you, Laura. Let's get a thank you, Laura going in the chat. Thank you, Laura. Um, okay. So the, the one thing I did want to say, uh, is do I have a clip for this? No, I don't. Um, watching, watching Skylar stay with Walt, just, you know, not that I'm saying the show should have been, uh, written differently. Obviously, I'm not saying that. But the experience of watching Skylar stay with Walter was very excruciatingly difficult. Uh, you know, it went up and down. It wasn't always the same feeling, but... Oh, wow. Thanks for the $4.99 uh, pounds, Wheatskins the dog. You're a very cute dog. Uh, and great. I'm glad everyone's giving Laura some love in the chat. Uh, thank you, Laura. Yeah, no, I will say thank you, seriously, because the title um, I watched... Breaking Bad after Better Call Saul. You would think like that's the most simple thing ever. How did I need someone's help to come up with that? Um, I just couldn't think of how to fra like, phrase like phrase it. Leave me alone. I just couldn't think of like how to phrase the. <laughs> I knew all the pieces and I couldn't. Like, I was like, oh. So Laura came through in the chat and was like, "Hey, I watched Breaking Bad after Better Call Saul. Yeah, where's the beard now? I shaved it. I've I've actually been beardless for like." A month and a half now. I just don't stream a lot. Yeah. I've been living the beardless life. It was a big shock at first to my loved ones. But they've they've come to accept me back in, into their life again. <laughs> wow, I can't believe Wendigoon watches my vids. That's crazy. This video has been pushed to like so many chan like so many people. Like I was looking up some clips for today's stream and I was getting suggested my own video. It's like, thanks YouTube. I'm actually good for now. I don't need to watch that. <laughs> wow. Very cool. Um, okay. It is time to address the mistake I made when I said in the last stream that Gail is a Marxist Leninist. That was a big L. Everybody enforced the L. You know, I got all the, you know, comments. Yes, he's a libertarian. He's not a Marxist-Leninist. I suppose. I'm definitely a libertarian. <laughs> so he's a libertarian. He just had a Marxist-Leninist book. He had the fundamentals of Marxism-Leninism on his wall. Okay, he's a complicated guy. There he was. I don't, it depends on the, you know, part of the show. Yeah, it happens. He's a complicated guy. He's definitely a libertarian um, because he thinks that some laws are different than other laws, which is true. Some laws are different than other laws. But, you know, I guess the question is how selectively and opportunistically you're choosing to make that distinction between just and unjust laws versus how much you're taking into account other people's interests and not just your own. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, he, uh, uh, you know, he might mean libertarian socialist. That isn't in the U S that is very rare for someone to say libertarian and mean libertarian socialist, but it is possible. It's very, very rare. It's like not how the words used in the U S but it is, it is conceivable. He would, he would understand that that's possible. Um, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Gail's, yeah. Gail's a, Gail's a cool fella. Um, Amir, yeah, <laughs> you, yes, I'm gonna watch Sopranos, uh, I am gonna watch Sopranos, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a little while, it's gonna be a few months, so I'll update you, but yeah, it's gonna be a little while. Oh, this is, speaking of politics, did you all see this? How did we get to a point where we treated other human beings 
as slaves. And, and we're okay with that. When I, when I see the, the Make America Great Again, my comment is, do you, do, you, do you accept that that could possibly be construed as a racist remark? And most people, a lot of people go, how could that be racist? Make America great again? I, you know. I said, so just ask yourself from, from an African-American experience, when was it ever great yeah. in America for the... Af- I mean, from so many perspectives, but yeah, absolutely from an African-American perspective. African-American. Yeah. When was it great? So if you're making it great again, it's not including them. So it's, it's to teach us in the woke world to open up and, and accept the possibilities that our privilege has created blind spots for us. And maybe I haven't seen what is really happening yet in all my years. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a very, very simple question. Like when, like what does D again refer to? It's just been a very simple question since 2015. Like, there's just no, there's no answer that has ever been satisfactory. That, like, <laughs> so, yeah, it doesn't, like, it's a question that just wins the argument because there is no valid good answer. Um, U.S. could be a good country, hypothetically, I guess. I'm an op- optimist. Um, and, yeah, I mean, someone in the chat called them liberal. I, you know, I don't use the word liberal in that way because... I think it's not too useful. I don't think of, you know, people as liberals just if they, you know, criticize, you know, the MAGA movement or something. But, uh, you know, because you could be left wing, you could be liberal. They're, they're different things. Yeah, it doesn't, you know, liberal. And I think of liberal more in the sense of like maintaining the status quo. Um, conservatives sort of wanting to roll back the status quo. Liberals wanting to maintain it. You know, I don't see either of those as very good uh, and mature approaches to the problems that faith, you know, that our, our society Leave faces. Leave me alone. Leave um, me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Uh, thank you so much for the five dollars, Jay. It really means a lot. Wow. Thank you. I know that clinical terms are different now, but would you categorize Lala Salamanca as more akin to a psychopath or a sociopath? Um, like, yeah, like antisocial personality disorder. I mean, I don't I mean, Lalo. It's like Lalo, Todd, Walter, there's, there's sort of these different shades. You know, what's the distinction between willingness to like go out above and beyond and, uh, you know, inflict harm versus to neglect awareness of the harm you're inflicting? Um, you know, Todd strikes me as the most detached from the feelings of others. And then maybe Walt. And then Lalo and then Walter, I guess, because Walter at least like does have relationships, even though he maintains them horribly. Um, Lalo has very few relationships, which is sort of part of what that whole like Kim calling him out thing is all about. Like he has no one he can rely on. Um, and like, yeah, I mean, the 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 important thing, I'm actually glad someone asked about this because I wanted to make this point. Um, the important thing is not what diagnosis we think the characters might have. And I am a therapist. Uh, Just point that out. Most people might know that. Um, But the the important thing is not what diagnosis we're trying to guess that these people might have. Because, you know, even me who diagnoses people, I cannot, you know, do that. But, uh, like... It, well, the important point is it's un, it's untreated, it's unaddressed. It, in no way has it ever been addressed. And that's the more important point. You can have disorders and rein them in and try to work with them and not have them cause too much harm, but be like inclined to have issues and stuff. But like the 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 thing is Todd, Lalo, Walter, they were incentivized by, you know, the lives they built for themselves to just feed into these antisocial tendencies their antisocial tendencies were um adaptive rather than maladaptive um and then maladaptive in the sense that uh they all died or did todd what happened to todd again (laughs) i'm trying to remember Did, did what was todd's like final end mike is similar to walt without the ego sad death yeah he is that's a good that's a good fair point you should do a video about that thank you for the two euros i believe that's euros <laughs> okay 
So, I mean, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, you think my internet's going out, really? Whoa, dog with the four ninety nine more. I like when people do that. Leave when the, not just for me, but for like other YouTubers. When like you give money and then you give more money, you're like, you know what? I want to give more money. It's like that's wow, that's intentional. Uh, no, it's not. Okay. What would you say to Mike if he was your therapy client and he told you the line about how he broke his boy? Oh, I mean, that was that was a beautiful moment. That that was that's just a very good question you're asking because that is a moment that easily could happen in therapy. He is essentially having like a cathartic experience with Stacy in that moment and it's it's so powerful and oh my gosh, when I was working on that video, uh, I was like <laughs> It was like hard to work on the video because of how good that scene is. I had to stop and watch it every time I was editing. Um, I would say to him, so, you know, so many different things, but it feels like I broke my boy. <sighs> I mean, I mean, it, it, it really depends on the context and whether it made more sense to just sit in the emotion at that moment or to explore it. But assuming that we'd already explored it a ton, sometimes like there's not much you could say, but maybe I'd be like, like, I wouldn't try to provide comfort and be like, oh, like, no, you didn't break your boy. I'd say, like, how, do you, like, maybe if it's worth exploring in that moment and it felt like it was, maybe I'd say, like, how do you, how do you feel like you influenced your son, like, over the years? Or when do you feel like that started? Or sometimes you just have to say, like, have you ever felt or ask, have you felt this way before? Um, or just sometimes you don't ask anything. And that does seem like a moment where you just wouldn't ask anything and you would just... Um, I mean, I don't think Stacy said anything in that moment. I don't think, I mean, she has a very <laughs> different thing on her mind than a therapist would have because she's like putting the two and two together, um, in the sense of like, oh, wait, are you saying that you killed this please? Um, but I, yeah, I, I, I think that's a great question, um, Kidney and finger looks really funny when he says he broke his point. Okay, that's great. What, whatever. It's, you know, we can all get different things out of the scenes. Um, okay. Um, oh, this is a funny, this is a funny, speaking speak of Mike. Jonathan, you have been known to argue with the writers over grammar. You, it was important to you that your character speak uh, with correct grammar. Is that right? I thought Mike should help them with the big words. Yes. I did. So okay, give us an example of a fight you had with them. Um, who who killed who? Well, oh. who killed who whom? killed whom? But yeah. I believe it's an object preposition. If they're uh, <laughs> right, uh, and and Schnaz refused. Schnaz wouldn't turn it. I said, who's Schnaz, who's don't Schnaz? Be, 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 help no. us out here. Who's the writer? Oh, he was the writer of the, the episode. Writer. Wouldn't change it? Wouldn't change it. I said, Tom, don't dumb Mike down. Just yeah. correct it. Yeah. They wouldn't do it. Yeah. Whom didn't? <laughs> 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 that is the the idea that Mike Ehrmantraut would say whom is fucking absurd. Jonathan Banks, what are you talking about? <laughs> What are you, are you, I, I mean, is this a joke? Like, you're going to actually say whom as Mike? <laughs> He's a crossword guy. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I guess. I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't stand out if I watched it in the thick of, in the heat of the, thick of the heat of the moment, you know, in the, um, <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely, Mike is definitely a little bit of a quirky um, fella, but yeah. Going back a minute, Quip gave me $4.99. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Your content always cheers me up. Such deep, amazing analysis. As someone who watched me says, what's your reaction on Mike's ending? Thanks for everything. Um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I mean, yeah, it was definitely beautiful. And I think it's kind of perfect that he didn't have to die and Walter just... Leave me alone. Uh, Leave me alone. You know. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> even says that in the moment. I think that's kind of beautiful and perfect in a sense. Um, just that it's like... I mean, Mike really led him, himself down the bad choice road over and over. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit more we can say about that. But like, 
yeah, he just, he, it made sense. Like he brought himself to that place and yeah, his daughter, Kaylee, not getting anything and stuff. I mean, uh, granddaughter. <laughs> Thank you. Little ghost for $5. Uh, so much that I'm going to spend that on, um, you know, maybe some cheese or something. This is more about me relating to a character and seeking validation, I guess. <laughs> Just before I even look at the rest of that question. Um, I actually, so I keep a document. The way I come up with all this stuff to talk about on stream, I like to prepare, like, to, like, have notes of what I want to talk about. And I have, my document's called, like, five slash, because it's, like, May something. And I kept changing that, three, four, five. Five slash something, and then like stream uh, val slash validation exchange or something. Because at one point I just came up with the expression validation exchange for live stream, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of right. Anyways, do you see Jesse as maybe having ADHD, being neurodivergent in some way? I think that's entirely possible. Um, yeah, I wasn't I wasn't thinking about it, but I mean, when someone's in the heat of addiction, it's really hard to assess for other um, like mental health you know, divergencies, but yeah, I mean, it, I'm sure. Yeah. He's probably been like self-medicating with, with drugs a lot of his life. And yeah, he does come across like, um, I don't know. He could easily be, yeah. Have ADHD or something. Yeah. I mean, he, he definitely like needed more support in different ways. I don't know. Yeah. And a lot of people did say I should have talked about him more, which is true. There's a lot I should have talked about more. Um, Someone saying ASD? Are you joking? I guess I didn't... I definitely didn't register that, but yeah. I actually have been to Albuquerque. I actually have been to Albuquerque, and it was dope. So I went to Albuquerque on a road trip with a friend. Um, we were driving from, like, the deep south to, like, um, Los Angeles, and we stopped in Albuquerque um, and, like, stayed over, actually. We stayed over at, like, uh, was it an Airbnb or... Yeah, it might have been a... It might have been an Airbnb. I think my friend booked it, so I sort of forget. But uh, ASD is Autism Spectrum. Um, uh, I just didn't register that for Jesse, but it's entirely possible. I don't assess for ASD also. Like, so I have a sense of it, but it's not like I, you know, I don't claim to be able to like, you know, I'm not the barometer on that, like, especially with a character. Uh, I don't think he's coded super heavily as, as being on the spectrum, but, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't, don't want to make any definitive clip. But yeah, um, the cool thing about Albuquerque was the the place we stayed. The it had like um, the doorways were like rounded, which is not common. I mean, it's like a southern thing in certain states in the U.S., but like um, I think it's got to be from like Mexican um, heritage, I assume, or maybe it's something else. But like, it's definitely like a unique style of architecture that you don't see a lot. Like rounded doorways. It was super cool and like very. The walls were like sticky, plastery. Uh, I don't know. And we went. Me and my friend went to like a. Uh, me and my friend went to like an Indian food buffet on like one of the main streets. Um, uh, but yeah, there was really cool graffiti and the street signs in Albuquerque nowadays. It's like really modernized Albuquerque. I think they like updated it a lot, or like the downtown area. They put a lot of money into it at some point. Because uh, when I visited it. It was the craziest thing. There's street signs. This was in 2015, I want to say. Um, there's street signs in the downtown area were like, I don't know how to explain this. Like they were, they were as if they wanted them, to, they wanted them to look like uh, digitized things. Like, like the sides of them were like cut. They, they were like very like, <laughs> fuck, it's so hard to explain. I, I think I've tried to explain this. Like, imagine, yeah, they just tried to make it look like it was made of little bits on the edges. So it was really, really interesting. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, it, why is there a natural hatred between Walt, Mike and Walt? I mean, Mike hates that Walt is, like, I think unpredictable, I guess. And, like, uh, maybe he's jealous of Walt for having a family. I don't know. That just occurred to me. Um, Walter, 
I feel like might feel kind of inadequate compared to Mike being like competent. Quip with the four ninety nine more. Thank you for the reply, my icon. The only other thing that surprised me, I didn't hear more direct comparisons to Mike's re- relation to Nacho and Jesse. Yes, I have thought about that, and people have talked about that. Um, yeah, Mike kind of takes Jesse under his wing, similar to Nacho, and they're both kind of stuck in the game. He kind of gets that. I think he's like a. It's like a. It's like a really good mixture of a good and a bad influence. Um, I guess. How are we doing, everybody? Wow, we got 373 people watching. Everybody, um, I hope you're doing well. I just want to say just a little quick advertisement for doing well. Be good to your loved ones and, um, you know, show them my YouTube videos. Thank you, Robert Gay, 499. What's with the 499? You spoke a bit about addiction. 12 step recovery groups feature in both shows. Can you talk about addiction, accountability, and recovery as themes? And br- Great question. Yeah, and I did work previously at a rehab, as I mentioned in the uh, video. Um, I worked, uh, I worked uh, for like two years about. I was an intern and I worked, so a few different roles. Um, and I definitely like really came to understand how 12 step programs can be super helpful for people. They're definitely not for everyone and people have to kind of find the right group for them and just, you know, but some sort of, it's so important to have community and yeah, accountability people you see. I mean, you see Jane and her dad going to the 12 step groups and you see the dad, you know, the dad, like, you know, reflecting when she's not there and knowing that it, you know, what it means of her kind of spiraling, uh, back and it's very sad but yeah I mean basically I have seen a lot of people go through 12-step recovery programs and like uh really grow in profound ways as a person and I think in some ways that's probably necessary um like a significant personal growth to really treat addiction because it just you have to resolve that that deeper thing that's making you know you reach for something else so um, and, and take accountability for all the mistakes and errors in judgment that come along with so prominently featuring like one thing in your motivational kind of scheme, you know, like you can, you, like addiction really hijacks the whole reward system of a person's brain. And so people end up, uh, you know, behaving super uh, harmfully. And so that the 12 step program gives people a place to be fully accepted uh no matter what they've done and i think that's really beautiful because that's what people need to kind of learn and grow um like it's this mixture of acceptance and accountability that's really i think important um and 12 steps are they're certainly based in religion and so they turn off a lot of people who are atheists but like i'm not i'm not a religious person I, I think you can find groups that are not religious, but um, that is definitely a barrier to entry for a lot of people because they definitely started super religious. But I think you do not have to be re- Trust me, I have seen a lot of very, very non-religious people have extremely successful times in uh, 12-step programs, especially it's not just AA. Sometimes AA is a little bit more religious, not necessarily, but NA, there's also Narcotic, Narcotics Anonymous, which is probably what uh, Jesse was going to. The social worker that Jesse goes to is extremely good. I mean, you know, I don't like his referencing of Kafka-esque. I think that's a little a little much. I don't think you want to just reference Kafka-esque. <laughs> you don't just throw that. <laughs> okay. Um, wow, Micro Kimmy, thank you for the 9.99. Lalo is my favorite, uh, all-time favorite antagonist in any story. Notch's character was the one I ro- I rooted for the most, and uh, Mike was my favorite overall character. Yeah, Nacho's just an amazing character, and so is Mike. I'm rewatching Breaking Bad for a fifth time, and I'm on season two, episode eight. Oh, so is that what I think it is? I think that's uh, Better Call Saul, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that Spooge? Is that, uh, no, no. I think Spooge is 2-6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spooge is 2 6. 2 8 is uh, Better Call Saul. Well, that is uh, kind of the most fun one for me to watch. Um, and I love Kafka, by the way. Yeah, he's actually literally probably my favorite writer. 
Um, but you don't just throw around cough gas. People don't know what that means. I love binging your essays. Would you? Uh, thank you, Natalie S. So much for the five dollars. Wow. See, some people get four ninety nine. Some Leave people get five dollars. That's all I'm gonna say. Leave me alone. <laughs> you don't have to give them money. I'm just joking. Would you consider a story slash character heavy video game series like The Last of Us games? I think you'd appreciate them. It would be so cool. Like. I don't game a lot. So, like, is The Last of Us even on computer? Like, or do you have to get a game system? Because, like, I feel like if I bought a game system... I've gotten into video games many times in my life, but I always kind of fall off with them. I Don't get me wrong. I've spent many, many hours playing video games. Most recently, I've, like, got briefly back into Spore, the really old game. I like that those types of, like... I don't know what even to describe it as. S- sort of, like, strategy, character building, uh, slash, like kind of repetitive tedious fun boring movement um uh and then before that i was playing um there was uh, swords and sandals (laughs) so you know i have like really like low class taste in video games so it would be interesting to try to go that route as a channel but yeah we'll see i appreciate the suggestion CS giving me five dollars also if wow it's really amazing y'all thank you for giving me money um and stuff I should say um if you want to support the channel for just like a buck also you can get connected with the patreon where there is a lot of bonus stuff so I'm not just trying to get your money if you do want to check out like behind the scenes how I made the video blah 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 no pressure but anyways uh CS uh oh also I just made an album I should probably promote that hold on um Bandcamp. I think this is the link. Hold on a second. And so I just made a album for instrumental songs. If you want to just relax and listen to some instrumental music. Um, CS says, if Chuck had witnessed Jimmy's courtroom confession and willingness to atone for his crimes in a life sentence, how do you think he'd feel about it? I think he would feel similar to, okay, not similar to Kim. He would feel the similar sense of like, that's not the way to do it, man. Okay, sorry. I was catching up with chat because I have to like do it in a weird way. Um, there's some love for Spore. I, l- I like that. Um, and then a lot of good recommendations. Um, Um, 12 steps is problematic to me because I've got schizophrenia in my family and diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder when sober. I have fantasies that I am a messenger for God. Hmm. Well, it's possible it's pro it, it is possible it's not ev- for everybody. But I don't know. Maybe, yeah, I would talk to a professional about that. Maybe, maybe there's some way to get the... You just want to make sure you're getting the help you need. It doesn't matter if it's from, you know, a particular thing. Um... Uh, but yeah, I think Chuck, I think Chuck would feel like, uh, it's nice that you take accountability, but it's so, it's so performative the way Jimmy does it. Like I've come around to like, he's sort of trying to take accountability in his own way, but my immediate reaction was it just feels so performative the way he's doing it. Wow. There's so many people giving money. I literally haven't been able to even continue like ma- like going through the clips it's what an amazing problem to have wow i hope you're all you know uh in having a good time leave me alone um leave me alone leave me alone guilt leave me alone. is a wholly negative emotion removing it entirely would be a net positive for the individual and for society i just think uh thank you very much first wave negativity um Uh, I just think the only way to remove guilt is to not do guilt-inducing behaviors. So if if that's what you're talking about, great. Okay, no one ever does guilt-inducing behaviors. Wonderful. Um, If what you're talking about is just not feeling guilt while doing what should be guilt-inducing behaviors, well, you know, how how much is that really going to work long-term? Um... I don't, I don't understand how it could ever be possible. I, for me personally, I'm very comfortable. I feel guilt. Oh, did I say the wrong thing? Oh my gosh. I like hurt someone's feelings like unintentionally or I, you know, wanted, yeah, I don't know. Like we all mess up in different ways. And I think it's, 
I'm definitely comfortable like not eradicating guilt and shame from my life. I think they're perfectly fine to feel in, in little bits, you know? I think shame, if you're feeling like you are a worthless person, that's not helpful. I think feeling ashamed of something you did or something like that, it kind of depends on how you're defining the term, you know? Being ashamed of something you did could be helpful. Thinking you're like a worthless person, it's probably not going to help you grow, you know? Just joined. What are we talking about? I don't... Am I supposed to know that? Okay, so right now we have 360 people watching. That's the most people... I mean, I, I, this is amazing for a live stream for me. Um, they're all... You're all like very nice people too. You're all very kind and, and generous with your consideration and you're so good. Okay, so one thing I wanted to talk about... Um, <laughs> The language I use in the video where I call, like, Gail, like, the person Walter murdered. You know, he's looking at the book given to him by the person he murdered. And calling Cheryl the widow of, you know, uh, Jimmy and Kim's old boss or something like that. Like, that sort of language I thought was worth sort of commenting on and reflecting on a little bit. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I really liked that. Like, I don't know if that's... I feel like that's common, but I also really know that I have a particular affinity for that so I love that you know I love just putting things in that sort of like kind of objective language like calling Howard you know their old boss and like calling no well specifically calling Cheryl the widow of their old boss like it just yeah it just reinforces um relationships that we can easily forget about and I don't know you know there's a lot of things that are real and exist but we we, if, if we're not thinking about them in the moment, it's almost like they don't exist. So if you're not thinking about the way Jimmy and Kim like are even related to this person that they're like manipulating, which you are, but you're not. And there's just different degrees of consciousness of that fact. And so I like reminding people of these facts with that sort of language. Um, I think that's part of what I bring to the table. Um, Check out the band Bardo Pond. I know Bardo. Wait, Bardo Pond is the uh, the Tame Impala like spinoff group, right? Thanks for the five bucks, Nick. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Is Bardo Pond or are they just called Bardo? Oh, okay, they're just called Bardo. That's cool. I'll check out Bardo Pond. Um. So what else? What else? What else? What else? So, um, oh yeah, this is funny. Um, my bad. Yeah. Yeah. I think Tar Tame Impala has like a spinoff side group called Bardo. Yeah. Or Pond. <laughs> Yo, that's so funny. It's Pond. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's Pond. Pond is the band that plays with Kevin Parker live. Yeah, and I think he, they're like affiliated more, even more so. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just trying to spe spread some very uh, meaning meaningless misinformation. One thing I th I think is just so worth commenting on uh, regarding Breaking Bad, which is a show I, I recently made a video about, um, is like this this way that he shaves his head. Like, that's legit. I get it. You know, totally. Of course. Yeah. You know, yeah. I get it. You, um, you know, you, yeah. I almost, I almost shaved, not, not fully shaved, but I almost cut all my hair today. Um, you know, I struggle with that all the time and I don't, I don't have cancer. I understand feeling like I'm going to lose my hair. I'm going through chemotherapy. I want to shave it. Of course. Of course I can understand that. What I don't fully understand is not saying anything to your family. Just not saying anything to your family. Morning. Water, please. Like, fuck you, man. <laughs> Just say something to your fucking family about it. Do you think more people would be open to going to therapy if therapists had more adequate parking? <laughs> Oh my god. 
Does he have to? They're his family. He doesn't have to, but like, why would you not even want to say anything to your family? Why are you so awkward with your fucking family, bro? <laughs> So, just interesting. Um, was Gail homosexual? It's kind of an antiquated way to ask. But um, I don't know. I have no idea. How would I know Gail's sexuality? It seems to me that he was interested in Walt because he wrote that note in it. That's why I mentioned it in my video. It really says he calls Walter his perfect silence. That sounds romantic to me. So, he's, he's, interested, he's interested romantically in Walter is my supposition. Uh, there's no way to know whether he's gay from that. He could easily be bisexual. He could just be himself. You, you don't necessarily know. Um, yeah, I do have parking. My clients have to pay. It sucks. They have to pay, but it's only like two bucks for like an hour, you know, an hour plus so they can come to the appointment and go, but they do have to pay. I just don't, I, I just don't, I don't have parking. Yeah. So I, I, I relate to that. That's legit. Um, Oh, you know, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. If you watched uh, through to the end of the video where I have this Walt Whitman book and, and I forget to do it as a joke, I forget to hold it up as a joke. I, j I did it again with the live stream. Holy shit. I didn't even do that intentionally. Like I was going to do it again. I was going to. Wow. That's crazy. It like really wasn't meant to be as a joke. I was going to like hold up the Walt Whitman book and wow, it's just fate does not want me to make that joke. <laughs> crazy. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, what else? Okay. Regarding regret. Okay. Does Walter regret working with Tuco? Do you think Walter regrets doing this? He comes in here, he does a badass thing with fulminated mercury. He now, uh, and now he works with Tuco, you know, and it all goes super well. I just thought that was an interesting question. It, it, it occurred to me. You don't think, yeah, okay, okay. That That's a few people saying no. You don't think he, uh, you don't think he regrets uh, working with Tuco. What does he, what does it, what does this question even mean? Like, who cares? Like, what does it even mean? Does he regret anything? Yeah. Would I ever do a video essay on music? I have a video essay on Animal Collective. Um, I don't, do I have other, I have some, I might not have any others, yeah. I mean, it was obviously such a bad decision, right? Like, he caused himself so much suffering. I mean, I guess you could say it was worth it. Like, he got to, like, topple Gus eventually if you're into that and stuff. Okay. Um, I have so much more to talk about. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, Saul Goodman naming himself a pun. Saul Goodman naming himself a pun. Like, he named himself a pun. That's just a fascinating thing that deserves to be pointed out. Um, like, to, like, and then he does the Hoboken Squat Cobbler and the Chicago Sunroof. And, like, he, he's just this, he's got this, like, penchant for wordplay and and his <laughs> topple cuts <laughs> um he's got this he, yeah it's just a really interesting thing to do i guess to really like he it shows his brain in an interesting way i like puns you know and in in you know i'm a weirdo i like pun i think puns are funny sometimes um Chuck McGill in the chat saying he defecated through a sunroof. Yeah, dude. You've been saying that for a long time, okay? No one's really listening. No one cares. Um, one of my favorite Skylar lines is when she says that uh, she's tired of Walter's obvious desperate breakfasts, which uh, I couldn't find a clip, but this is a photo of one of his obvious desperate breakfasts. 
Do you remember that line where Skylar says, no more obvious desperate breakfasts? Um, um, thank you for, thank you, Retro Reggie, for, I think that's, I think that's becoming a member, but I honestly can't tell. But yeah, thank you for becoming a member of the channel. I hope you enjoy all the huge benefits. CS, back with the $5 to $5, or is that a glitch? I don't know if it's a glitch. Naming himself a pun is a way to denigrate the Chuck's legacy. Uh, like the name McGill is utterly worthless, making a literal joke. Hey, you should do video essays. I'm not even joking. That's, you know, that's 200,000 views right there. Um, obvious Desperate Breakfast is an extremely beautiful uh, piece of writing. And I really think she, I really think it's a, it's a sign of how good her short stories are. Um, Leave me alone. Leave me oh, alone. not a member? Leave oh, you alone. just gave me money. Me okay, well, that's good anyways. Thank you. Uh, or whatever. Yeah, whatever you, whatever you want, uh, you know, whatever you want. Um, the throwaway line about Saul Goodman wanting people to think he's Jewish, if th that's what you're referencing... Yeah, it was a little bit, it was a little bit strange. If it was anyone, any, anyone besides Bob Odenkirk, I'd be like, that's a little strange, but it's not, it's not strange. It, it's all good. It's all, it's all good, man. But yeah, he goes, yeah, it's just for the homies or something. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, he, I get, I mean, Saul Goodman would be the type of person to be like slightly anti-Semitic because it like helps his career. I don't know. Is that a weird thing to say? <laughs> that just sort of came out. Um, so yeah, he he does his obvious desperate breakfasts, um, which is just a beautiful line that honestly sounds like it's straight out of a Sylvia Plath poem. Obvious desperate breakfasts. Um, so, oh, okay, 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 okay. Here's what I want to do. Are you ready to do a poll? I think this is a segment. I think this is our, I was going to say our first segment. Our first segment is, is we're in the middle of it. Um, I think for our second segment, I want to, I want to, I want to do a poll. Do you all want to vote? Do you like voting? Um, so I, I mentioned this in the video and a few people responded this and that and so on. Um, I passed a pre-bar exam. Is that true? Uh, well done. Um, so I mentioned this in the video, okay? But I want to ask now, if, if, uh, hold on. Okay. So in the end of the pilot, if, uh, if Jesse was like, Walter, Mr. W no, he would say Mr. White. If Jesse said, Mr. White... The fact that you just killed that person and tried to kill both of them in our RV makes me not want to work with you and I'm not working with you. I'm not doing it. I'm not working with you. You're a terrible person. I'm not working with you. Would Walter kill him? And I think when we go through the comments later, someone sort of mentions this as sort of comes up. I'm not talking about like whether Walter's worried about being able to make meth on his own. I'm talking about whether he's worried about someone knowing what he did and that just being an unaddressed thing that he tolerates. Would he kill Jesse or would he just like tolerate the stress? Okay, we're going to do a poll. So, so engage with my audience, start a poll. Would he, what would Walt do if Jesse said bye, dude, at end of pilot? Um, kill... Jesse, wait, <laughs> I'm going to make this interesting. His 24-year-old former high school student. <laughs> oh, I can't fit that? Okay. His for uh, I can't even fit that? Okay, kill, fine. I won't be cheeky about it. Kill Jesse, tolerate the uncertainty. Uncertainty, okay. Ask my community. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. 
Fairy Princess, thank you for the 550 Canadian. I don't think so, at least not immediately. He doesn't have the father-son thing yet, but he can turn Jesse to the DEA, mutually assured destruction. But would he be willing to do that? That's true that he could, and I, and it's possible that he would. I think season one, Walter only kills Jesse if he became a threat. But doesn't he become a threat by saying, I'm not going to work with you? Or no, in Walter's mind, does he not? I'm not saying I would kill Jesse. <laughs> Jesse would be incriminating himself too. Yeah, I guess. I guess so you just count on that. I guess he would just count on that. I mean, yeah, I don't know. You 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 know you know better than me. You all are the experts. I'm just a newbie on the scene, farting around, trying to make the most of, you know, my uh perspective. Um only Oh, wow. Most people are saying he would not kill Jesse. Okay, okay, okay. So you all think he would just be like, so Jesse right here goes, well, you know what, Mr. White, I'm out. Goodbye. And Walter goes, please, you know, if you turn me in, you know you're going down. And then he just lives with it. Okay. Okay. He's not that evil in season one yet. He only kills Domingo and Emilio, but he's not evil enough to kill Jesse. Interesting. Interesting. How does that work? <laughs> I mean, I guess the I guess the reason I'm asking is because I think there's a legitimate possibility that he would kill Jesse. And I'm trying to understand why other people don't seem to think that. But like... What's the difference between killing Crazy 8 and killing Jesse? I don't understand. Like, yeah, Crazy 8 tried to kill him, but at the end of the day, he doesn't kill Crazy 8 in self-defense. He kills Crazy 8 because his he's worried that Crazy, you know, Domingo can turn him in. And and this was something I was going to bring up later actually, but I'll I'll, I'll mention Oh, actually I was going to bring it up in like a minute. Um you can justify killing Emilio. You can't justify killing Domingo. I'm sorry, y'all. You can't justify killing Domingo. The fact that he cracked the plate and was going to hurt him. Yeah, he was fucking in chains. Of course he was going to hurt him. You can't kidnap someone. You can't take them off the street and throw them in your car. <laughs> Yeah, the broken plate. Yeah, because he was fucking kidnapped in the guy's basement. Yeah, I would break a plate. <laughs> you can't kidnap someone just because they just because they tried to kill you. You can't. That's not how it works. <laughs> like, I mean, I just don't. I, I don't know. I mean, do you want to live in a world where people do that? I guess is like. No, I have not had to tell a client that they can't kidnap someone. Most people most people sort of get that, I feel like. I mean, he's he's in the position where he's like, okay, this guy could turn me into the feds. But the point is, like, all I'm trying to say is, like, Walter, just like Mike, just like Jimmy, he took the steps to go down that road. So there's no point in trying to moralize about the decisions he made to try to strategically and effectively go down that road with as little consequence as possible. Because that is what he's doing. Um, wow, people have given me a lot of money on this stream. I'm going to fucking buy some, like, sandwiches and shit. Like, I'm going to, like, get some, like, like grapefruit juice. Micro Kimmy with the 999. He has love for Jesse. Why does he always insist Jesse be his only partner? Uh, always to spare Jesse's life in every case. But in the end, lets Jesse be taken by Uncle Jack, but not kill. I don't think I don't think Walter really has like consistent ability to relate to others with any sort of equal type of relationship that we would uh yeah consider healthy by laura sandwich i i would i don't think laura's even here yeah <laughs> um oh there's so much more to talk about y'all i gotta keep going okay um 
Um, okay, 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 okay. Uh, so I pulled the audience, and the audience, the audience responded. You all do not think he would kill kill Jesse. Okay, thanks for thanks for answering. That's alone, good to know. Leave me alone. You don't. Seventy nine percent said he would tolerate the uncertainty. Twenty percent said he would kill Jesse. That doesn't add up to one hundred percent. I think you know. Stop the count. I think it's rigged. Um, uh, you know, and this is why electoralism. You know. Okay. Um, so next up, Gus killing Victor as a Better Call Saul v- viewer, and um, yeah. Oh yeah. One way. Yeah. The death of like Don Hector and and Juan Bolsa. Um, that is. Uh, I'm sorry, Don Don Eladio and Don Hector. Don Don Hector's death is crazy too. But Don Eladio and Juan Bolsa. Uh, their deaths are so wild as like a uh, Better Call Saul viewer. And like, I mean, this scene is fucking epic. Like, I mean, like, obviously. Like, I'm not going to like play it in full. It's, uh, yeah, but <laughs> it's really an epic scene. It's very, very badass and definitely uh, one of the, one of the most. Yeah, cool, uh, powerful, badass moments for sure. Um, and it is really amazing, like, just some of these deaths as a Better Call Saul viewer. Like, you did get to know Don Eladio even better. And uh, same, go- uh, same goes for Victor and, I guess, Tyrus and um, Juan Bolsa. So that was just something I wanted to mention that I didn't get a chance to mention in the video. Uh, yeah. Um, Thank you so much, Edward Gill, for the five U.S. dollars. It's less about morals and more about Walt's image of himself at the time and his subconscious sentimentality towards Jesse. Yes. Yes. He doesn't have... It's it's for his own sentimentality. It's for his own, like, what makes him feel better, what he feels like he he needs to do for himself um, and to, like, sleep at night. But... Yeah, there's a big difference between that and having like a con- sort of alone. consistent, you know, pro-social moral code, I guess. Um, do people ever tell you you look like a friendlier BJ Novak? <laughs> I've gotten several comments on the new video. I, I think because of the wide ranging uh, audience, I've gotten several suggestions about who I remind people of. Uh, BJ Novak, I did um, I did mention earlier uh, Wendigoon, who... who who uh, was hanging out earlier, which is dope. Um, yeah, people have said that. But also the most common one is someone by the name of Andrew Garfield, I believe, which I always think they're referring to a president, but I think that's an actor. Um, so yeah, people like to say, oh, you remind me of this person, that person. That's fine. I don't, you know, whatever. I, I you know, I don't, it's whatever. I, yeah, BJ Novak is seems cool. Um, so, you know, I'll take it. Um, it's Spider-Man. I'm a little bit older. I don't, he wasn't Spider-Man when I was, you know, it was Tobey Maguire when I was a kid. I'm sorry. I just don't, I never even saw that Spider-Man. I've got been off the Spider-Man boat. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, I don't understand how they've continued making movies of the Spider-Man variety. And like some of the other movies, I'm like, like they'll come out with new ones. I'm like, how, especially Spider-Man. I'm like, how is there a new one? But I haven't watched them. I'm sure they're good. I'm not talking shit. I'm not saying they're bad. I just, like, as a millennial, it's like, how are they still making Spider-Man? I don't, I didn't realize there were, but yeah, I guess it was a comic for many years. So there's all different plot lines. I mean, I made eight videos about Better Call Saul. So I'm I'm sure, I I guess you could make many movies about Spider-Man. But I haven't, I haven't seen them. So they might, they might be good. They might be bad. I don't, you know. Um... Uh, thank you, Asan Haji Muhammad, for the two euros. Isn't sad that after Lala's death, Hector was crushed. Yeah, yeah, they do. They actually do a good job of even making you empathize with Hector for a second, where you're like, you're like, even Hector, man, it's fucking Mark Margolis is the name, right? I, I know, cause I was like, I was like, why does Donald Margolis have the same last name as Mark Margolis? Um, but. Yeah, like, he's an amazing actor, and, like, I mean, you really do, like, yeah, the when Gus goes to confront him, I mean, you're like, holy fuck, man, he's just, like, making an old guy feel bad, but, I mean, you don't, 
you, you do know better at the same time, but like, um, yeah, I did hear good things about Spider Verse. So yeah, definitely not trying to talk shit. Just saying what it's sort of like, <laughs> phenomenologically. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention when I was talking about luck is like the fact that Domingo happened to work at the place where Walter bought Flynn's crib. Like, that's really an interesting element of luck that would have been worth mentioning. Um, and it's enough to, you know, make him sort of question his his path here. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention about this scene that I didn't get the chance to is the way Walter just puts the ball in um, Domingo's court to be like, you have to, like, convince me that to not, not, to not kill you. And Domingo makes, like, a simple point-blank argument, like, you know, what more can I say? I said I won't turn you in. And Walter's like, no, like, go further, like, convince me not to kill you. And it's just interesting the way he outsources responsibility there. Um, and, uh, okay, so that's that. Um, Saul saying this. What the hell is wrong with you? You act like you're the first guy this ever happened to. I, I caught my second wife screwing my stepdad, Okay. I mean, that was interesting as a Better Call Saul viewer. I was like, oh, I that <laughs> sounds really hard, man. Like, whoa, dude, I did not I did not realize you went through that before Kim. No, it wasn't Kim. Kim was his third wife. I looked this up earlier. Yeah, I, I double checked this. Right? Right? <laughs> you all are fucking around, right? Um yeah, so that is still really wild, though. The fact, I mean, like, assuming that he's being honest, right? Because, like, it's clearly coded as, like, he's being honest here. His second wife actually had sex with his stepdad. Yeah, meaning that his mom remarried also. I didn't even think about that. That means that his mom, I didn't even think about that. Because he's at his mom's deathbed and... His dad must have died first. No, there's no indication of that. Is there? Is that referenced? Yes, wait. No, no, I don't think that's ever referenced in Better Call Saul. Which parent died first. But his mom must have remarried at some point. And then his stepdad had sex with his wife. I mean, like, as a Better Call Saul fan, like, reading that and being like, well, that didn't come up in Better Call Saul. <laughs> I hung out with this guy for six seasons. He didn't mention that. He just throws it out to Walter. The dad did die first. Okay, yeah, that might be referenced explicitly or just implied. Okay, yeah. 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 Okay. So very fascinating stuff. Just very, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, I guess that's like trust issues, I guess that certainly will fuck with your head. I mean, obviously to have your, your, Leave me alone. Leave you know, me alone. your spouse have intercourse with your, your, your family member. That's, that's very, uh, disturbing. So yeah, very interesting that he suffered that and we never heard about it. He just kind of pushed it down for all of better call Saul. <laughs> You think he's lying about that? No, you think he's li you think he's just making it up? I, it seems to me like he's yeah. I mean, it seems to me like he could be genuine. With you, you act like you're the first guy this ever happened to. I I caught my second wife screwing my stepdad. Okay. I mean, you think he would just make that up? It's definitely possible. Don't get me wrong. It's definitely possible. <laughs> I think he's being honest. I put my I put my vote in the he's being honest. I will say I have this spoiler warning on the screen. I've gotten a few comments on the new video, people saying that I spoiled something for them. I assume they mean Better Call Saul because Breaking Bad has been out for like a very long time. Um, nice office hours gif. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, I don't think anyone has pointed that out yet. Um, but yeah, I watched that episode with Bob Odenkirk and he said that line and I was like, that would be good for um, to exploit. Um, okay. Okay. There's a lot more to, there's a lot more to talk about. Let's just move on to the next thing. I was just saying something, but, um, 
I think it's fine. Okay. This is so funny. This is the actual sound effect. Yes, Ben. Is this going to be on the murder? Like they actually do the vine boom sound effect. On the murder? That's so cool. Is this going to be on the murder? I really, I got to say, I really made myself laugh when I was working on the script and and mentioned the concept that the class was just pranking Walter. Because, <laughs> like, I hope I gave some high school kids watching, like, a good idea. Because, like, or college, I guess. That would be a pretty good prank. Like, if you just, like, say something like that and then the whole, you get, you talk to the whole class beforehand and you're, like, pretend I said this other thing. I mean, it wouldn't really, it, it wouldn't really be good to do to a teacher who's, like, you know, really struggling or something, but it's a pr kind of a good prank, I feel like. No. Is this going to be on the murder? Um... So, okay, so that's, yeah, just an interesting point I wanted to point out. Um, oh, this is, I literally noticed this today, okay? So this is in this scene. If you, there might be a few people in the chat who uh, support the channel on Patreon or YouTube members. You might have read through a little bit of the uh, full notes where I took like 60 pages of notes watching the show through, like my live notes. And one of the notes I said here where Walter asks Hank, like, hey, do you think maybe you should go to therapy after Hank is traumatized from the El Paso experience? Um, I put in my notes that Hank said uh, no, because going to therapy gives you a creepy vibe. But I just realized today he says something totally different. I think you might want to talk it through with somebody. What? A shrink? No, 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 no. Can't go down that road. Start going on that road. Kiss your career goodbye. I literally thought he said it gives you a creepy vibe, but he says kiss your career goodbye. And I noticed that today. And that's like, I guess, kind of funny that I made that error. <laughs> I just thought it was a really funny line, and that would make sense for Hank to be like, therapy gives you a creepy vibe. But like... Because he would be creeped out by, like, any sort of intimacy of any kind. Even just, you know, normal sort of, like, emotional vulnerability. But he's actually saying that... <laughs> that attending therapy, that, like, accessing mental health care is incompatible with a career as a police officer. Um, so... Interesting. I wonder what that says about the institution of policing. Um, one thing I noticed when I was rewatching is in Kim's confession to uh, Cheryl, you can see clips of her confession, and she does mention Mike Ehrmantraut by name. So what I realized is this means that um, because she mentions, you know, Aaron Trout was at Fring's house when she was forced to go over there and about how he cleaned up the murder of Howard. So the court knew about Mike well before Hank was on to Mike and like interrogated him and stuff. So this is a question for you all because you would know better than me. Did Hank have that have this information about Mike when he interrogated Mike? When Hank interrogates Mike, does he know this? That the I mean, he's DEA, right? But does he know that the Albuquerque court has a confession tying Mike Ehrmantraut to Gus Fring. This is long after Mike is dead? I totally missed that. Wow. Yeah, I guess it, I guess, wow, I totally, that completely slipped by. Yeah, I guess that is after Mike is dead. I don't know why, I, I guess I just didn't even, yeah, I guess I didn't think it through. Yeah, Mike's totally dead by this point. Um, Because this is, yeah, this is well after. Fair enough. Okay, well, that settles that. See, it's nice having 370 people watching to just, like, immediately correct me. <laughs> 
it's a good way of making sure I don't get anything wrong for too long. And, you know, if I get something wrong, I get it. You know, I get it sorted out. Yeah, that's completely true. This is well after Mike is dead. Um, I, I just didn't consider that for some reason. Um, so... Okay, so next up... Oh, yeah, this is courtesy of Simply Snaps, which thank you again, Snaps, for providing such insight with the script. She was my script consultant. I've never had a script consultant before, but I was like, hey, do you want to give me help? You want to read through my script and tell me your thoughts? Um, And she also sent me this clip of Vince um, talking about uh, the writer's strike... Uh, season one getting interrupted by an earlier writer's strike. And this is interesting because there's obviously a current writer's strike going on, if you haven't heard about that. So I wanted to listen to this. Who are all these characters and what do they mean to the story and the hero? And where did the where with all their courage come from for you? Maybe Breaking Bad was the first. I got lucky. I, uh, so much of uh, so much of my career, I can just the, the quick answer is I got lucky, and I'll tell you how I got lucky in in, in regard to what you just I asked. I really wish you would, because there's a bunch of people staring at us. <laughs> <laughs> the we had the writer strike in 2008, and and we were it was it was a it was a terrible time for you know a lot of folks in the audience probably in the in the you know in the in the guild and whatnot, and it was a tough time for for the, the business in general. But the silver lining for us was we were we had a nine episode order. We, we were we were two thirds of the way through season one of Breaking Bad, and I was so nervous. I'd never run a TV show before. The show had not been on the air yet. We were shooting and editing, uh, writing, mm. shooting, editing in a vacuum. No one had seen the show yet, and I really had the feeling that I needed to throw the kitchen sink at it. That the writers and I needed to get every bit of drama. Um, so much. So- I think that's part. Of, yeah, I'll just I'll just wait. Actually, yeah. the writers and I needed to get every bit of drama, um, so much so that uh, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this publicly or not. But the season one ending, we the, the writer strike came along and we didn't get to do our last two episodes. We had to end our season one with seven episodes instead of nine. And our ninth episode that year, we were seriously leaning toward killing off Hank. Uh, Walt's brother-in-law, played by wow. uh, Dean Norris, in that first season, and that is a good example of I was ready, willing, ready and willing to throw the kitchen sink at it, right. because I was afraid we wouldn't be holding people's attention. So I learned a lesson that you know the, the real trick is 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 to is to keep everybody interested, but do to do as little as possible mm. plot-wise, share to keep as little everyone. as possible with them. Because well, it, which sounds kind of stingy, but the, the thinking behind it, I guess, is that you you don't know how long you're going to have. Mm. You want to parcel out the drama no quicker than you have to, because you know conversely, if you throw the kitchen sink at it uh, in the first few episodes, where do you go from there? And mm. you know. I, as an audience member, I tend to get exhausted if I'm watching a show and it's just like things are happening so quick. I can't, yeah, can't sort of, you know, I, I don't want, I want to be able to save one. A little so bit. that's that's really great, and y'all can look this up if you want. It's uh, the Kevin Pollock Chat Show, P O L L A K Chat Show, Pollocks. I'm sorry, P O L L A K S. Um, very interesting to think that, and it, it so that pressure to like throw the kitchen sink at it, uh, I'm. You know, it's fascinating that they had to get reined in by fate. You know, fate had to pull in and say, like, nope, there's a right of strike. Like, you can't do that. So it is very interesting that, like, you know, I talk so much in my video about, the, like, the role of fate with Walter and how he relates to fate and, like, how he doesn't really know how to make sense of it in any sort of healthy way that, you know, would be healthy for someone in a living a, a life different from his. Um it is interesting how fate plays a role just in any of our uh, any of the things we do, including obviously the the creators of this show. Um, to think that they got saved from killing off Hank due to just like a lucky or unlucky. I mean, it's not ideal that workers have to strike for you know any sort of increases in their um, payment, uh, but for their labor. But you know, it is like a lucky coincidence for the show. Um, though it would obviously be be good for writers to just maybe like have part ownership in the in the profits of these ventures or something like that. And that might be a 
a wild idea. Um, but uh, something where they get paid more would be good. Um, one thing I thought was just uh, very interesting is like when you see Walter with Elliot, and it's actually not really part of this clip. This clip starts right after. When they're joking around about old times, it's like the happiest you see Walter. Like it's some of the happiest you really ever see him. Like you really never see him like that where he's just like joking around. I mean, he does an impression of the old professor. They just like, I mean, it's just, it's interesting to watch and be like, oh, wow. Like he, you have to believe like he would prefer to live more of his life feeling good. You know, even if it meant having more uncertainty about what he's leaving to his family or something like that. It is just interesting to to think of him denying himself more of this sort of emotional, just like being a, just feeling good. Um, um, okay, now what uh we do have we do have a lot more to talk about i haven't even gotten to the comments i have like 25 comments to go through god damn it how long have we been streaming 95 minutes okay i have to pee and refill my beer so you all are gonna just chat with each other and have a great time in the chat for about three to four minutes while i refresh my human organism and uh and we're going to come back and we're going to chill. We're going to continue to chill. Feel free to leave if you have other stuff to do. No pressure. I know this is going on a very long time. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be back in a little bit. And I uh, I will uh, continue uh, enjoying your, uh, your uh, time here. Uh, so yeah, goodbye. Bye. <laughs> on a break.
Hey everybody. Thanks for hanging out and uh, continuing to hang out through the break. It's, uh, it seems like some people had a nice break. How was your break? Oh my God, how was your break? I can just check the audio. Um, yes, that is original break music. I make music in Ableton. I do actually, I just released an album yesterday. Um, just four songs, but they are pretty chill and you can actually see me making some of them on the side channel. Uh, the link is in there somewhere. That was not a song in the album actually, but that is on the Patreon a ways back. I did upload that to the Patreon. So if you want to pay a buck, you can, I think you can download it too at the Patreon. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun making stuff on Ableton. I really enjoy it. If you've never made music on the computer in a digital audio workspace, as they're called, it's really fun. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would definitely uh, recommend it. I do have a beer. I saw some funny jokes about CBT in the chat. That's classic. Um, my thoughts on Always Sunny, I, maybe one day. I do love... I do definitely have a lot of love for that show. It's really, really funny. Yeah, this stream will be on the side channel. You know, I can probably post a link in the chat. Um, but yeah, you can... Yeah, so check out some of the music if you want. If you want to pay me money, you could check out the Patreon and the YouTube members. Um, but yeah, how's, everybody's, how, how's everybody doing? What did you do on the break? Um... So, you know, what did you do? Bob123 gave me four ninety nine. Thank you so much. Thoughts on Saul watching Better Call Saul first? Did you see him as comedic like the writers intended or more tragic with, with the context of BCS? Well, in I think you're asking about in Breaking Bad. He, he is still the comedic person in Breaking Bad. It's hard to see him as tragic in Breaking Bad. Alone. He's still framed as like very much the comedic uh, relief. Is that, I feel like I'm saying that wrong, comic relief. Um, but he's obviously tragic in Better Call Saul. So that does sort of like, you, you still kind of feel that. But yeah, we'll, we'll get to a little bit more of that too. One of the comments we'll look at kind of uh, refers to that. I, I actually uh, don't have a lot of experience watching anime, but maybe, maybe one day I'll check out more. Um, cause I'm definitely not against it. I just, as you can tell, if you've heard me like list the shows I haven't seen in that part four Better Call Saul video, like pisses some people off. But like, I just don't watch a lot of stuff. Um, 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 hold on, I'm just posting a link and check out the side channel. That's too long of a link. Uh, let's fix that a little bit. Check out extra stuff. Blah 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 bleep bloob. Blah. Okay, that sounds good. If you were a Subway cookie, what are the different types of Subway cookies? Aren't they all just like melty, sort of like mishmash nonsense? Okay, Patreon link. Check out the side channel. Side channel link. Oh, I did not need to open that here. Okay. Um... Kim's confession. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was this speech, the carbon speech to his class. Um, oh, Subway does really have, like, different types of, of, uh, of cookie. Um yeah i yeah okay so yeah th th this was this is a really wild scene i don't think it gets a lot of attention maybe it does but like he's talking about this guy who got ripped off he's talking about the inventor of the diamond howard tracy hall who made huge amounts of money for ge general electric gigantic corporation and got barely rewarded and it's a very fascinating scene I don't need mods, no, because my audience is very cool. Also, I just ban people if they say something really offensive. So I minimize my workload. I'm drinking an IPA. Um, it is very fascinating, like, because he's being observed, right? 
You know, you remember being in school and the fucking administrator comes in to observe the teacher? This really brought back memories. Ah, it's such a vibe. You're like, whoa, like what's happening right now? <laughs> uh, let's look at his reaction, shall we? What do you want? She's like, I I'm getting what I want. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like seeing Walt suffer. Whoa, I don't remember that transition being in the show. Wow, Breaking Bad is really Or say the diamond and the man who invented it. So so the thing you I have to mention. I legally have to mention here, okay? Basically the last thing you've seen Walter do here is in the previous episode and uh, t like getting Jesse to go over to the Spooge household to potentially kill them. And then that's been what's been going on in this episode. And then this is what you see of Walter. I might be missing a little bit here or there, but y you're coming away from seeing Walter in that role, Kingpin telling an underling to murder someone, to murder, to murder someone. <laughs> and like... Uh, and then now you're seeing him at school. And so, like, what's crazy is, like, so far, he's, like, there's this, like, uh, uh, this is, like, maybe a pretentious word, but it just came to me, like, the, a, a patina? Is that the right word? A patina? Like, there's this, like, vibe of, like, normalcy around him where it's, like, he basically is just a normal high school teacher. But then you see this edge throughout this scene of, like, He's there's this obsessiveness, there's this like void, and there's this like him. I don't know him like being disconnected from his class, and he's giving a not a bad lesson. It's not even like it's a bad lesson. It's just like like there's no connection between him and his class, and you see him just like it's just kind of a grasping. Uh, I don't know if I got. I'm gonna. If I if I play too long of a clip, I'm gonna make it so that YouTube's gonna be like, you have to trim that out, and then the chat won't show up on the replay, and then it's a nightmare, and I'm responsible. Um. So I saw someone say in the chat, Walter's a bad teacher. There are definitely some points where he's like a fine teacher and whatever, you know. But it is what what I definitely thought about a lot watching the show is like he clearly is one of those teachers who like gets off on having power. And, like, it's not healthy. <laughs> like, just the whole, like, uh, apply yourself. He's just, like... I mean, it's not bad to tell someone to apply yourself, but it seems like he does get an ego boost from being overqualified for the job. And I don't know... I honestly don't know that he's that overqualified. You know, I don't... I don't know that there's necessarily evidence. And Simply Snaps has, could talk more about this. Because she was talking about this, I think it was in our chat, but it was definitely in some of our conversations we had uh, previously. But, like, there's not that solid evidence for Walter being, like, some sort of once-in-a-generation chemistry genius. <laughs> I mean, contributing to a project that won a Nobel Prize does not necessarily mean you were, like, the lead on the project. Um and I think it's a very valid question to say, why, why does he settle? And I don't think teaching high schoolers is settling, but he's not happy and he's doing something that he feels is beneath him. I think teaching high schoolers is an incredibly valid and worthwhile profession. I'm a therapist. If you teach high schoolers, your work is definitely as worthwhile as mine, if not more. You're influencing many, many people at a very formative time in their life. And, you know, it's, but he seems to not have the right temperament for it. He's certainly not a teacher I would want to have as a high schooler because he just comes off like he's um, unhappy, I guess. A fortune. <laughs> this stream is going really well, by the way. I hope you're all having a great time. I mean, incalculable. You want to know how GE rewarded Dr. Hall? A $10 U.S. savings bond. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it's such a beautiful moment. And I, you know, I sort of talk about this with the, 
systemic influences on Walter's greed in the video that I sort of referenced briefly. Um, I, yeah, it's just, I mean, he, he has a valid concern here. Like, of course, this is a captivating story. What could be more captivating than someone being a brilliant inventor and being completely bilked out of enormous, you know, amounts of revenue? And obviously, okay, okay. Obviously, Walter relates to H. Tracy Hall with his gray matter experience. And like, that's just such a black box in his past. I It's just really interesting, like, okay, say that Say, say that, you know, Elliot and Gretchen did stuff worse to him than it seems. You know, say they were terrible to him, which it, it doesn't, we don't really have evidence. It seems like, you know, I got a few comments saying that Gretchen hooked up with Elliot while she was still dating Walter. I don't, or while engaged to Walter, I don't think there was evidence of that. That's never mentioned in the show as far as I'm aware. I didn't do like a... You know, I didn't I didn't look just for that. I don't think there's any evidence that she cheated on Walter. Um, you know, dating someone's friend after you break up is not a it, it's not a crime. It's not. A, <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. It's like, yeah. Um. So like it is. Yeah. Like, but say they did say they did cheat. You know, say they did hook up while while she was still dating Walter. Or, like, they did, you know, worse things or something like that. Um, I Like, still, you know, Walter put himself in this position of being resentful for his whole life. And it clearly hasn't, like, I don't know. I mean, I mean. I guess I would be resentful too, I, I guess. I mean, but you have to like come to terms with your own responsibility in your in your life. Like we don't cause all of our <laughs> suffering, obviously. It's not like a, you know, of course, there's enormous amounts of environmental influence and all kinds of influence outside of our control on our suffering. But when you do have responsibility in your suffering, taking responsibility for that is just super empowering. And it's like, okay, you know what? I can own that decision. I left Grey Matter because, yeah, I was uncomfortable with, you know, Gretchen. I didn't want to date her. I didn't like her family, blah, blah, blah. And, like, he would have to come to terms with, like, deep shit about himself and his upbringing and stuff. Um, yeah, Gretchen's, like, way happier with El Elliot. Like, yeah, for sure. I mean, <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> okay, okay. We're getting... We're making progress. We are making progress on this stream. I got a lot of people in the chat saying we're not making progress. Chop, chop. Got a lot of people saying chop chop in the chat. Um, so, <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, because I talk about Walter calling Jesse son. I forgot to mention that he also calls Flynn Jesse. I, I do. It, it drives great. Yeah, that's good. Can you imagine if your fucking dad called you the wrong name? Um, Fancy Pop Tart, I do have a Discord. I just do it for like channel supporters at this time. I don't mean to have it be like a gatekeepy thing, but um, you know, if you want to just like support the channel, I guess um, you're not really missing anything. So it is. It is very interesting to call. Uh, to call your son by the name of your um, pseudo son. Obviously, that's very interesting. Um, but yeah, I do have a Discord. We chat about stuff. That's kind of chill. It's pretty, very low key, very minimal um, stuff going on. I just called Walt Jr. Flynn. So let me address that. And we, we are going to talk about that a little bit more in the soon. Um, but yeah, so basically, I mean, I tried to, when I was writing the video, I tried to just refer to him as Flynn um, in the scenes where he goes by Flynn at that time and then refer to him as Walt Jr. in the other scenes. 
But I actually think when I rewatch it, I think I didn't do that. I think I lost sight of that. I lost track of that. Um, but I mean, it's sort of hard to say. I don't really know what he would want, but I mean, I think it's fair if you just call him Flynn all the time. Cause like, obviously that's the name he settled on. Um, but at the same time, I, I thought it would be kind of cool to refer to him as he went by at that time, but it was something I wasn't necessarily sure of, uh, um, but yeah, he obviously goes by Flynn in the end. And I mean, you know, so <laughs> yeah, he definitely doesn't want to be named after his father. Um, but yeah, I mean, imagine your dad calling you someone else's name. I mean, like, and like, it's so not random too. It's not like your dad just happens to be under anesthesia or something and is being wacky. It's like your dad's been super weird for like a, a year or two and it's, um, random fact about my aunt is actually a female junior. Thank you, Lao Lu. I, I knew it does happen, and that's why I referenced knowing that it does happen, because I looked it up, and I knew that there are female juniors. So I, I said, like, there are female juniors, but it's, like, not even 1%, I don't think. Yeah. And again, again, to, you know. No, no, like there's nothing wrong with being named junior or naming your kid junior. It's not the end of the world. It's just a institution of naming that I think deserves some sort of criticism, but it's not like some huge travesty. Uh, (laughs) Um, I got so much positive feedback about the Lewis segment. I was so happy to provide my insight about Lewis. Um, um, oh yeah. The other thing I wanted to say similarly related is like when Walter's explaining, okay. So, so Flynn obviously has cerebral palsy, right? And so, um, you know, that's, that's something he lives with. That's something that influences his life. Um, and so that's part of why he, he drives in this like sort of like altered way with using both, both feet. Normally when you drive, you use one feet, but to compensate, I guess, um, it makes it easier for, for Walt Jr. or Flynn, depending on how he wants to go at this time. Um, so he uses, uh, both feet and he's learned that way. And Walter in this scene, part of what he's doing is telling, uh, his son like hey you can't you can't do that uh what did i say one feet (laughs) (laughs) yo i'm on my second beer and the first one was 16 ounces okay we're gonna be saying one feet we're gonna be saying one feet let's get a one feet in the chat um (laughs) fucking live streaming (laughs) okay what i want to say here okay is Walter is so bad at explaining this. Walter doesn't even just say the basic reasoning of why you should use one foot, okay? Why you should use one feet when you're driving. It's just so, I mean, I'm not, I don't have some big revelation. It's just so you don't forget which foot you're pressing with. But like, Walter just doesn't say that in this scene. Okay, this people are gonna be like, it's understood. He gets that across in his own way. But like, I was watching and being like, why don't you just say to your son what the fucking reasoning is? It like, it's similar to like, you know, okay, I wasn't, I wasn't sure whether I felt like going into this. It's similar to, uh, you know, going through the separation with Skylar and not giving Flynn any like understanding of what's going on. It's torturous to watch. And okay, you might say, what is he supposed to do? Tell his son he's like making drugs and stuff. Like, is that really what he's going to do? I, when I watched the show, I decided that what Walter should have done when he was separating from Skylar and living separately, when Skylar insisted on living separately, totally reasonably, and they were living separately and they had to like, sort of like tell, but not tell their, uh, I was going to say their kids, their, their grown kid. Um, what Walter should have done is say to, uh, Flynn, I had an affair with someone else. I think that would have been an ethical lie 
And I think that would have been a way of not telling your kid that you're making meth if you don't want to do that yet. There's maybe a, maybe when they turn 18, you tell them that you cooked meth for many uh, for many years <laughs> or whatever. But I, I realized like, okay, you lie to your kid, you tell a benevolent lie. You say, I, I, I cheated on your mom and she's mad at me and that's why we're living apart. And in that way, you take away the pain. I'm, I'm sorry, but like, I think sometimes dishonesty in very rare occasions that we should not be relied on to be the judge of subjectively, it is ethical to lie. And I think that that one occurred to me. I wasn't going to mention it because I have so much else to talk about, but like he should have just told Flynn, I cheated on your mom. And obviously she cheated on him, but like that, you know, him saying I, he cheated on her would have explained him living outside of the house. And so in that way, you give some sort of understanding to your kid. You help them deal with what is really, I mean, it's a lie, but it's, it's actually less bad than what he actually did. So, so in a way, it's like, it's a lie, but it's, it's really, it's actually nice to Walter too. It's a lie that's, that makes him look good compared to what he actually did, which, um, yeah. So that was a little of ramble. What do you all think of that? Uh, I don't think that's a good lie to tell would give Flynn trust issues. It's the only one I could think of, though. I just don't know what else you do when you're, like, talking to your kid and you're like, yeah, I'm living separate from your mom now, but, like, I can't tell you why. <laughs> I can't tell you why. <laughs> It's torture. The gambling. Yeah, I'm gam I've been gambling again. Yeah, he could have done the gambling. Did they have the gambling thing by that point? Yeah, it, yeah, they did. I don't know. I lose track of all this. So, okay. Um, let me close out some of these tabs before we move on. Just this is a lot of the other things we talked about. Blah, 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 Okay. One thing I forgot to mention with the I am the danger speech, and it's not even in this clip. I couldn't find a YouTube clip with it, and I didn't feel like pulling up Netflix. Um, I, I should have mentioned this in my video. It's on me. It slipped my mind. It's fair to say, and no one commented this actually. I'm a little surprised because I thought it was a fair criticism. It's fair to say I didn't mention that he leaves the room and he comes back to try to apologize to Skylar. Okay. But like, that's not a significant... I mean, that's, that's, it's significant. It's not meaningless, but it's also like, um relatively i guess relatively insignificant in light of like if you're willing to scare your your partner your your wife your your person this much like being able to go back 20 minutes later after you've taken a hot shower and uh, and apologize in um, what i'm sure would have been a super accountable apology based on his track record it's just you know, I forgot to mention it. I wish I mentioned it, but it's also like only a relative degree of significant given how bad it is to scare someone. Like apologies, they don't undo the harm, you know? They like take you on the path to rectifying the harm, but like they don't undo it. And like, <laughs> so yeah, I felt a little bit guilty for forgetting, but at the same time, it's like, you know, what? Yeah. Like you, you can't just expect people to just 10 minutes later be like, Okay. No, it's all good that you did that. Do I think there's such a thing as a marriage that's neither abusive nor codependent? Yes, I do. I think marriage is, is like historically a patriarchal institution, but that doesn't mean it's doomed to be, uh, you know, abusive or something like that. I think it has roots in like, it seem I don't know. Am I wrong? I, it seems to have roots in the ownership of of like, like the possess the possessiveness of men. Like men trying to be possessive, it seems to be the roots of marriage. But like, it, I think it could be a very different thing. Modern, you know, in modern days, and people fall in love, and they want to, you know, they want to make it a, they want to make it known, they want to have a big party, they want to make it legal. I think it can be a beautiful thing. I mean. 
it's part of like integrating something ineffable like love and irrational not irrational but like hard to put into words and just like you know it's something really beautiful and profound like love it's part of like integrating it into your into your i guess civilized like legal life and saying like i want this to be like a contract that we're in love we're like that much in love um okay (laughs) so much more to talk about okay um one thing i meant to mention in the video regarding like masculinity and stuff is like uh this this dynamic with this character look like i said my word is my bond yeah it's just interesting like so this this idea of this this character influencing jesse and like trying to be you know be like hey you know is your word your bond type of thing it's obviously like um it has this like positive masculinity side of it of like it's similar to hank being like you know to walter like i talked about in the video like turn yourself in be a man turn yourself in it's like uh you know it's just interesting like this character sort of represents and obviously he's you know committing crimes and blah 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 i don't think that you know reflects on your character as a person necessarily just because you're committing crimes people do different things to survive but like he has this sort of integrity that is represented as like a positive masculinity uh influence on jesse of like hey and and we're gonna get into this more too so if you have questions about how i'm using the term masculinity we're about to go over the comments and like some of them will lead to that, those conversations but uh um yeah it's getting some great comments in the chat um anyways i just yeah i wanted to mention this because it's this character is interesting he's a interesting sort of positive masculinity influence i guess right is that crazy i don't know okay um <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, okay. I really want to talk about this. I really want to talk about this. Do people talk about this? Uh, let me zoom forward a little bit. Just try to not get copyright issues. Um, I saw a comment in the chat just before I continue. Um, Ever read The Origin of the Family, Private Property in the State by Angles? I think I, I think I skimmed like the beginning of it. I don't think I've read it, but I've been wanting to because I think analysis of how the family and the state sort of interact with each other and just like how the family has been a different sort of... Uh, relationship over time historically and how we relate to our family members is different based on the societies we're in and stuff i think that's really interesting so i do want to read that uh, something like that but anyways like this scene really gets me like uh, check this out I'm sorry, I'm really worried about having a copyright issue, so I'm just going to pause it for a second. I hope you're doing really well, and I hope you don't mind me pausing it, and I'm just going to talk for five more seconds or four more seconds, and now I'm going to continue playing it okay. I understand. Do people talk about this? Like, do people talk about that? That is like... This is in the show. He has a fantasy of Skylar saying, I understand it specifically when he's in the Tuco's trunk. And I watch it the first time and I'm like, well, that's the most significant thing I've seen (laughs) from a psychological standpoint. It's like the trunk even opens. Like the trunk even opens, implying that like he's still having the Skylar fantasy as Tuco opens the trunk. It's like that integrated into his life. And it's Skylar saying, I understand. That's so perfect. Yeah, she looks angelic. She's clearly coded as like an angel here. And like he's like, you know, he's on the brink of death. He's clearly like, I could die. And, um, you know, so, okay. So what does it mean? All he wants 
Sky, you know, all he wants sort of is for Skylar to understand why he's doing what he's doing. And it just, it's just, um, it's an illusion. I mean, it's like a fantastical belief that she could. <laughs> this is an inhuman Skylar. This is not a human Skylar with human needs and her own thoughts and feelings and emotions. This is a Skylar who exists in Walter's imagination as an angelic idealized form. <laughs> and that's the only Skylar that could understand. <laughs> this is the imaginary made up one. That, you know, doesn't have her own needs. Understand. So, yeah, very interesting. Okay. Comments that people left on the video. Now, first one. Cool video, but I hate that you made me see Horny Walter so much on loop. That's valid. Um, thing is, it's hard to... You know, it's hard to edit stuff like that. So it's like there's nothing else you can show. Like, you know what I mean? So, um, and I will say before I go through all these comments, um, I'm only showing ones that like I looked it in and I was like, oh, I want to talk about this on stream. You know what I mean? I'm not showing like my favorite comments. They're just comments that I was like, oh, that stimulates me to talk about something on stream. The reason I'm saying that is like, uh, just some of you left such amazing comments. Literally, I've read some comments that are like, holy shit. That like, just some people being like really super, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to talk. It's really surreal and amazing to be able to reach a huge audience on YouTube. It's, it's really, really bizarre. And <laughs> I'm just sitting here in my apartment talking into my computer and 320 people are sitting there. Like, you know what I mean? It's just weird. <laughs> so there are like 2,000 comments on the new video almost. Um, and so like, yeah, some of them are so nice. I'm only showing the ones that were like, this would be good to show on stream. Uh, I had to pause to say something. The fact that you call the I am the one who knocks part the I am the danger part is fascinating. It makes me realize how much of my Breaking Bad experience has built by the pop culture phenomenon it was. I was obsessed with AMC at the time and had seen the ads for months and watched the first episodes live. For the first few months, no one knew what the hell Breaking Bad was. And then it caught on like wildfire and everyone was talking about it. My coworkers and I would get together for watch parties. I spoke about it to my school friends in college. It was on everyone's mind. I will never forget going to London on vacation and the guy I was staying with had the break... BRBA squares on mirrors. Oh, that's interesting. I believe it was season three or four at the time, and I was shook that there was such a big thing. In, it was a big thing in England as well. I I loved this comment because it's. I didn't even think of that. I didn't even think of the fact that I use the phrase. I call it the "I am the danger" speech instead of the "I am the one who knocks." That's really interesting and like. It does show how different my experience is not being a part of the like fandom, not being a part of the common experience and just doing it on my own. It's it's definitely not the ideal way, but it's just different. It's not inherently worse. It's definitely got some downsides to go through it on your own, not have a community uh, besides a YouTube audience. Um, but it is, I didn't realize that I was just calling that whole scene something different. That's really funny. Okay, I'm getting more very good comments. Thank you, Fairy Princess, for the 550. Do you ever worry as a therapist about clients having access to your socials, parasociality having access to you outside of sessions, whatever? So, makes me think of something I mentioned in the new video, which is how I sometimes wonder about... Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. How I sometimes wonder about whether our desires are incoherent or inconsistent from a totality perspective but we don't see things from that perspective usually so we don't realize i realized pretty early in my youtube channel if i'm trying to reach a bigger and bigger audience i'm inherently going to be running the risk of my clients finding my youtube channel it's just not a big deal i keep everything totally fine and professional enough and like it would be weird i mean most of my clients or some of them would be like whoa this is awesome and then some of them would be like huh, this is weird but like that's just how it is and like you know i i'm happy with it so 
I, I just sort of conduct myself when you have a profession, whether it's therapist or honestly any profession, like if, and you don't even need to have a profession. It's just like the older you get, like what you do in one area of your life influences how you're perceived in other areas of your life. And it's just, that's kind of a good thing. And so I just like, I view it as a good thing to say, okay, you know, let me just like be conduct myself in an appropriate way. Um, um, and it's a little zany and, you know, like, you know, whatever it would, you know, it's not ideal for a client to watch my YouTube videos, but they can, they can. Next comment. So there's a few more people saying that, uh, you know, my take on something was really different. So these people are saying my take on the green light speech was different. I've always seen it as a genuine, a good attempt to make the family feel better, give them hope. The speech is prompted by Marie complaining about the hospital, asking how is anyone supposed to survive this death trap? Walter says he survived, and at this point in the story, his family, besides Skyler, since she knows more than the rest of you, is excited about the remission. Um, so his survival so far gives the authority to assure his family. And then, you know, just a few more people saying, like, they agree. Um... And yeah, that's the complexity of it. I can't argue with that. He's, you know, there's some solace. Is it... Leave me alone. Leave me alone. You know, self-interested solace that, you know. Uh, This person says, uh, for instance, according to his notes, he hated... uh, I think what's therapy goes a little too far with disliking Walt to the point of not understanding him. For instance, according to his notes, he hated Walt to the point of wanting him off the screen late by season two. Fair? Okay, fair. That part's fair. Interpreted Walt crying and breaking down when Walt Jr. came to visit him as crocodile tears. That's true. I called it crocodile tears multiple times. And didn't initially catch that Walt's phone call to Skylar and Ozymandias was exaggerated to try to get her off the hook. Instead, thinking it was fully real. That's true. That's true. And there are many things that I didn't catch. Um, And there were other people saying that I didn't have enough empathy for Walter. I don't know how much empathy you're supposed to have for Walter. I, I mean, I think it's a very personal thing. I don't... You know, I, I don't, I, it seems silly to me to expect people to have empathy for Walter. Um, but it's totally valid if you do. I I don't think you should expect other people to. Uh, I think it's a very personal thing, but you know, yeah, there are things I miss and, uh, I did feel that it was crocodile tears a lot and it was hard for me to get on board with caring about Walter's journey Um, because I didn't feel like I could relate to his decision-making process in a significant enough way. Um, And that's just me. But yeah, people, you know, have every right to say that my perspective misses things, because it does. It does. Um, And yeah, I mean, yeah, so I don't know, whatever. There's a lot more. I think we're going to get into a little bit more about this in a bit. Um, I did something interesting and watched Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, but watched each season of each and then swapped back and forth. I get all these comments about different ways people watch Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. I've gotten so many comments. This is the only one that describes something like this. Um... Yeah, I I mean, that is, like, fascinating. To watch one season of each, <laughs> I knew this would make the YouTube audience so mad. Okay, it, maybe it is a joke. Maybe it is a joke. <sighs> I love that... I love the scene at the end of Better Call Saul where the side character named Walter White, who is usually an honest and kind man, decides to follow his brother Hank, who was only seen once or twice, on a trip to a meth lab. During the trip, Walter White says his catchphrase, guess I gotta break bad, and the credits started to roll. (laughs) Bravo, Vince. (laughs) I really wanted to pin this one, but I just was like, I'm just not going to pin a comment for this video. There's just so many comments. I'm just not going to pin any. But if I was going to pin one, it would be this one. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I need to address this. This is really serious and this is on me. I need to address this and I shouldn't have waited two hours into the stream. I have gotten so many comments 
telling me to watch El Camino. And it's, I did, it is on me. I, the way I, the way I said that you find out that Jesse duped the feds in, in Better Call Saul, that was an error. That was not, I knew that that line wasn't right and it didn't, it didn't occur to me until I posted the video. I was basically completely obfuscating the fact that I totally have seen El Camino. I just forgot about El Camino in that, in that moment. So I have literally gotten so many comments telling me to watch El Camino and telling me to, um, and like, and like, uh, asking if I've watched El Camino and I definitely, uh, I definitely like take ownership. I didn't communicate that clearly. <laughs> I did give the impression that I hadn't seen El Camino, even though I do mention it later in the video. I, that being said, that would be crazy for me to not have watched El Camino, right? I mean, I did give the wrong impression, so I can't be like, how did people get the wrong impression? But like, I just forgot to mention it in that in that sentence. I, I definitely didn't like consider El Camino like forgettable or anything. Obviously, I, I mentioned it a little bit in the in the forgetting sort of section, but like could you imagine if someone like spent all the hours watching Breaking Bad and never took the two hours to just watch El Camino? <laughs> and I mean, I said on my last stream, it's kind of weird that El Camino is just Jesse and doesn't follow up on the other characters. I got one or two comments like, why, you know, why would El Camino follow any of the other characters besides Jesse? I don't know. Why wouldn't it? I don't know. Is it, where's the law that El Camino is supposed to be a Jesse thing only? I still liked it. I still thought it was cool. I don't, I'm not saying it should have been anything different, honestly. That was just my impression watching. I was like, oh, it's only Jesse or it's mainly Jesse. That's, that's just like notable. Uh, but I do think it actually works that way. I like that about it. I think it's kind of special that it followed his story to that extent. Um, it's definitely not let, I mean, I'm not trying to rewatch it much. I'm not trying to, I'm honestly not to be rude, but like, I'm not trying to watch Breaking Bad that much. Uh, again, rewatch it anytime, you know, maybe sometime in the future, but mostly the scenes with Saul, I'll rewatch. Um, but I don't, to be fair, I don't rewatch Better Call Saul either. <laughs> so I, I don't, I'm not, it's just, these shows are intense. Okay, next comment. Watching Breaking Bad before Better Call Saul makes you realize that uh, Los Perios Hermanos debuted spicy curly fries and then inexplicably took it off the menu in Breaking Bad. And I wish spicy curly fries existed IRL. Great comment. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Very valid and very uh, pointed in a good way. You know, because when you think about that, it really says a lot about our society, I think, um, and, and our economy. And the way our economy and our society sort of, you know, inter interlock. Um, okay, this comment got 357 updates. So I'm like a little confused about it. Kim didn't enjoy stealing as a kid. It was the way she got love approval and time with her mom. So she did it. There was no hint of enjoyment in her face when her mother was talking about it or when she gave Kim what she stole for her. Sure, because when her mom gave Kim what she stole for her... Kim is thinking, that's kind of weird. I'm a kid, but my mom's an adult. Maybe she shouldn't be like condoning stealing. Because Kim is smart enough to know stealing's wrong, but she just wanted to do it. I stole as a kid. I stole as a young adult sometimes. Like, it was really dumb. I don't recommend it. But like, I understand being like, I know this is wrong and I still want to do it. Um, I think I think the, the idea of saying that she didn't, enjoy it but she got love and approval that's a very interesting i i wanted to share this comment because i thought that was a very interesting distinction she didn't enjoy it but it was something she did to get love and approval i just wouldn't have thought of that distinction and i thought that was really worthwhile like what does that mean like what is that difference and how does that how do you understand that difference for yourself between enjoying something versus just doing it as a means to an end um Um, yeah, that's fair. And I think I might've said she actually enjoyed it. I might've used that word. So, uh, I don't think it's false to say she enjoyed it, but I think it's not the full story. And this comment helps by pointing that out. Yeah. What is enjoyment? 
jouissance. Yeah, I forget. Is that a Nietzsche thing? I forget who, what that is. Um, what if he made moonshine? What if Walter made moonshine? Great comment. Um, my oh, it's Lacan. Okay, yeah, even 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 better. Um, I haven't read Lacan, but I you know I've read some Zizek. Um, so I've gotten some regurgitated Lacan. Um, what if he made moonshine? So if he made moonshine, um, that's not, that's no different. I mean, there's, the thing is like, obviously meth is not like morally evil. It's just a, it, like different drugs do different degrees of harm. So it's, it's more likely to do harm than cannabis, but you can still have harm done from cannabis. You can still have harm done from moonshine. Harm can be done from fucking shopping. Like you can, it's just anything that gives you a rush can do, like you just have to be aware of how you're being affected by things. So if Walter did, you know, everything that he did with moonshine, it's all the same. If he cooked, if he cooked, if he, I guess it's cooked. If he brewed moonshine and then behaved differently, then it's a different story. If he brewed moonshine, but everything else, if he distilled moonshine, okay. <laughs> and meth is disgusting because it causes a lot of harm, but so do other drugs. And it's like, you know, I mean, the problem with Walter is not, it, the meth is a relatively small part of it. It like, it's not good to make meth, but that's also like a, he does a lot of other bad stuff in service of making meth. I think the idea is like, if you're going to devote yourself to certain things, they often come with these unintended other things. So if you're, oh, I'm going to be a meth kingpin, it's probably going to come with some violence. If you want to be a moonshine kingpin, it's probably pretty similar in that regard. I, I do believe meth is um, harmful in its own way. So is heroin, so is fentanyl, so, is, you know... Some drugs are more harmful than others. They're not all the same. And I obviously, you know, you have to be discerning about yourself and about the substance. You know, some drugs you have to have a testing kit if you're going to do, you know, like I would not recommend taking MDMA unless you test it. Um, and like same with like psychedelics unless, I mean, like same with acid for sure. Like, um, so yeah, it's like, it's really like, you know, a lot of different drugs can cause harm. It's more about like, uh, you know, like the the process of like trying to dominate that field. Like, you know, Walter says he's in the empire business, not the meth, uh, not the meth business and so on. And it's like, so if you're going to make an empire out of anything, you're probably going to, you know, it could be teddy bears. You're probably going to, you know, make some heads roll. Um, Chip Clip says, love the video. Thank you, Chip Clip. Um, okay. Next comment. Okay. So this is a lot of people, including Simply Snaps, my, my, uh, wonderful, uh, helpful, uh, friend, online friend who, uh, helped with the script. Uh, this is a lot of people pointing out that, uh, there are a lot of anti forgetting or pro forgetting moments that I did not mention that I could have, and probably should have mentioned. Um, that's true. That's true, at 100%. So this is uh, Tuco telling Walt he'll get a new family. Um, <laughs> pro forgetting, that's interesting. Um, pro remembering being an almost bad thing for Gus and Chuck dedicating their lives to destroying someone who slighted them. Um, you know, Gus being Hector and, and then obviously Chuck being Jimmy. Uh, that's an interesting aspect. I didn't really talk about how pro forgetting, I mean, I'm sorry, pro remembering can, you know, there are harmful ways to remember, just like there are harmful ways to forget. Totally valid point. Would have been good to point out. Um, yeah. Also, I might be jumping the gun, but Gus is hugely anti-forgetting. Same sort of vein. Totally good point. You didn't jump the gun. Uh, Simply Snaps pointed out that uh, an anti-forgetting point is Mike saying, no, that's the one thing you can never do in response to Jesse saying he'd make things right. Uh, yes. And that is a very Mike thing that we talked about with Better Call Saul too, the way he's like, if you go down that road, you go down that road. And that is like a, a slightly more sort of like grounded way that he approaches life uh, compared to Walter as well as Jimmy, who think they can sort of undo anything wrong that they do. Um, I think your interpretation of the characters is wrong a lot. Eric, Hank was definitely pro forgetting, especially when it comes to um, things like El Paso. Yes. Yeah. I didn't talk about Hank enough. That's totally true. 100%. 
would have been good to point out. Jesse has plenty of anti-forgetting moments when it comes to Jane. Um, yes, 100%. Uh, keeping her cigarette in his car, calling her to hear her voicemail. Uh, yes, that is extremely good examples. I should have mentioned them totally. Hector also falls into anti-forgetting category as he's uh, asked uh, by the cartel time again to leave leave his beef with Gus in the past. Yeah, similar idea of anti-forgetting being a, a negative thing, just like pro-remembering can be a, a negative thing. I guess those are the same. I just phrase them differently. <laughs> One critique I have is that when you were talking about Jesse anti-forgetting moments, you did mention his video confessions to Hank, another interesting and, and worthwhile point. So yeah, uh, you know, when I make my videos, uh, you know, they're not, they're not comprehensive. They're not comprehensive. I never want to claim them to be. I never want to do an encyclopedic thing. I mentioned this with the Animal Collective video. It's like, it's art. I, I do consider it art. I don't consider it documentation. It's it's just a weird quirk that I enjoy putting all this effort into stuff. It's creative. And so I, I enjoy people pointing this out. But yeah, I'm never going to give you the, the full comprehensive, exhaustive take on something. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I never talk about Hank being racist. <laughs> I literally never mentioned that either. That was I just that just occurred to me today. But it's like, you know, I can't mention everything. Okay. Breaking Bad isn't a drama, it's a western. That's a great I love that comment. I don't know whether I fully agree with it. I you know, whatever. It's genres. How do you categorize things? Um uh Calling it a Western rather than a drama, I think is very valid though. I think that like does, cause I, I forget if I mean to talk about this later or if I meant to talk about it earlier. I had a hard time with Breaking Bad's dramatic elements, especially involving uh, Walter. I, I, I found the show so fucking funny, but when, if I was asked to like feel for Walter, it was a struggle for me. I didn't, I didn't, that wasn't earned for me as a viewer in 2023. Um, so I like the idea that it like, it's less about the drama of the emotional struggle of Walter and more about like seeing him through. I don't know. I, what does the Western even mean? I don't know. I'm not immediate. <laughs> They're not mutually exclusive. That's true. But I like the idea that it's like, it's less about the emotional struggle and more about the, like, I guess like the tableau of like, um, what is a Western? <laughs> I should have like thought about this before I like There's a vibe difference. There's a vibe difference. <laughs> okay. I feel like watching it in reverse would suck because Saul doesn't do much on Breaking Bad. That is true that sometimes I wanted to see more Saul and I was like, oh, I want more Saul. But, um, you know, you sort of get that going into it. Um, so, you know. Um, <laughs> everything's a Western if it's in the desert. Okay, this is now we're getting into the masculinity stuff, okay? Absolutely loving the rest of this. We'll probably type up a bigger comment or just forget a little... Say, saying people who think Walt is being a badass in these moments lack empathy and don't understand relationships is every bit as insane as hardcore Walt Stan giving you a, uh, calling you a bitch ass uh, pussy for a negative reaction to Heisenberg antics. So, um, Walter, Walter White and Saul are not real people. They don't have human rights. They don't have anything. They're just shadow puppets on a wall moved with exceptional skill. Um, enjoying when bad things happen to those shadow puppets is every bit as valid as wanting only the best for them. So I thought this was a very interesting comment, and I think it does point to something that I maybe maybe it's a blind spot, but I still stand by my perspective. I don't I don't agree that there's shadow puppets because I mean even if you just go beyond like the way people treat Anna Gunn, like people we obviously feel about these characters like things taking them seriously we don't think they're real people but we when we talk about them we treat them like real people so i don't know that like I, you know i got a few of these comments saying that i was overestimating the proportion of the breaking bad fan base that like viewed walter's behavior as badass but like i wasn't trying to say it was all people i just think there's you know some people trying to 
you know, view like Walter's behavior as badass. And that's the thing I'm talking about when I talk about it. So I don't necessarily understand this idea that like they're just shadow puppets. I guess I don't really know how you're allowed to retreat into that sometimes when you talk about the characters and care about them other times. Um, Everyone refers to him as Walt, but I talk about him as Walter and it makes it seem like I don't like him. That's 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 yeah. It's he's it's formal. Yeah, I definitely don't call him Mister White. That's for sure. Um, so then there's these comments, two different comments. So that was from the same person. This is the same person. These are two different people. So first one is one of the most interesting comments I've received. I genuinely watched the show from a completely different perspective than how most people seem to have. I was just on Walt. So these are comments that sort of represent what the previous comment was kind of like talking about. Okay. I was just on Walter's side the entire time unless he was making decisions that impacted his ability to continue his crimes. The show was entertaining to me because I got to watch a weak man take control of his life. He essentially becomes the top dog by killing Gus. By the end of the show, he takes out an entire hideout of armed men in order to save his friend slash partner. I saw that as a heroic death and I am honestly taken aback to see just how skewed my view of the show was because of my lack of morality. That was one of the most interesting. I've never read a comment that seemed so like introspective, but also like just not introspective and just like, just like vulnerably just saying like, here's what I think and here's what I feel. I don't know. It's really interesting. And then this person saying, I think it's difficult not to find myself rooting for Walter at times, not only because of the protagonist framing and the sort of insidious appeal of toxic masculinity, but also because Brian Cranston is an absolutely wonderful guy. And sometimes it's hard not to uh, to divorce. Uh, And he kind of looks like this commenter's own dad. So I will say part of, I, I should say this, Part of where I'm coming from with this stuff, I need to admit, I like I like Brian Cranston, but I've never watched his shows a lot, so I don't have this built up positive association with him like I do Bob Odenkirk, and I know that must be really really different for people who do. I like Brian Cranston, I have super positive feelings towards him, but it's not the same as someone I've never I didn't watch Malcolm in the Middle. I think it's a good show, but I, I watched a few episodes here and there. I've never got it and never like watched it, so that's a difference. That's an interesting meta sort of difference that does play into it. The idea that like you do build up this affection for the actor that then you see. Um, But um, okay, let's move on because there's more to to say about this. Okay, this person says, I think the real problem with the term toxic masculinity is when it's used as a weapon to target traditionally but not harmful male roles or uh, pastimes. There's nothing wrong, nothing toxic about things I like taking your son hunting, nothing inherent at least, or boys play wrestling and fighting, but they're often targeted as to- toxic masculinity for no reason. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to s- sort of start off with this comment in the masculinity section of these comments because, like, for sure, I'm like, I mean, I, I don't say it, and I'm definitely not trying to say it. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not criticizing taking your kid hunting or going hunting. Uh, that's totally valid. I'm not crit- criticizing wrestling or fighting. I don't think those are toxic masculinity. I think fighting in a context where it's consensual and a sport is totally do what you want to do. It's not my thing, but do what you want to do. Toxic masculinity is when you cause harm. Going hunting, I mean, okay, vegans would disagree and that's valid and they're honestly correct. But like, I don't like, I don't, I don't live my life that way. Like, I think if you go hunting, that's okay. Um, I guess be responsible about it, but I don't, I definitely don't think that using the idea of toxic masculinity is useful to describe behaviors like taking your kid hunting. If you take your kid hunting and you make your son sit in the dark for 12 hours, because that's how he becomes a man in your eyes. Now we're talking toxic masculinity. You understand what I'm saying? You know, boys play wrestling and fighting could be could be totally fine, could be toxic. Depends how you go about it. Totally depends on how you go about it. There's play fighting can be totally chill, doesn't have to be toxic. But yeah, for sure, you know, I'm not out here trying to demonize like play aggression and like pastimes and and recreation that relates to traditionally masculine things. I don't think that I don't think that's wrong. What I think is bad is incorporating and internalizing um, traditionally masculine traits that are harmful. 
and then justifying it on the basis of masculinity when it is more importantly an unhealthy trait. So we're going to talk about more. Uh, let's look at another comment. If honesty, okay, this, this is one of the harsher ones. If honesty and accountability are not masculinity, then it follows neither is any toxic masculine trait. The problem we have with the term, the problem we have with the term toxic masculinity is the hypocrisy, if not inconsistency, people like this creator me, conveniently dismiss. They say all good traits are human universals and all bad traits associated men's behavior are inherently masculine. He then states masculine character. He's talking about me. He then states masculine characteristics are subjective social constructs. Great. Which side of your mouth should we listen to or not? He is unable to steel man the opposition yet, if willing to put forth a professional opinion of why we are incorrect. And then I censored part that gets a little bit more personal, uh, where they're trying to insult me. Um, if I'm going to steel man the opposition, it's. Um, I mean, this this person's totally misunderstood. <laughs> It's hard to even respond because they're totally misunderstanding what I'm trying to say. Um, but it is, I did want to pull it up because there was one or two other people who had the same misunderstanding. Um, so part of it is I was slightly unclear when I say this line in my video, like um, you're going to determine, like you determine what you consider masculinity. And then like, regardless of what you consider to be masculinity, you either aim for certain traits or you don't aim for other traits. And it's a very unclear line. I totally didn't phrase it well. What I'm trying to say is like, obviously masculinity is a social construct. It means different things in different societies and, and it changes over time. And it's good for us if we're going to incorporate that construct into our lives to try to incorporate good qualities into that construct. If, if you care about being masculine, cool. Make good traits part of what you understand to be masculine. So it's just a total misunderstanding. I'm not trying, uh, there's no point, uh, you know, I would never try to say that all good traits are human universals. I understand why they have this mis misunderstanding because I do talk about how like Hank makes this point to Walter, like just be honest, like be a man and just turn yourself in. And I say, well, you know, why do we associate that with masculinity? But I'm also making the point that like it could be associated with masculinity or it could not be. And like, it's fine to associate it with masculinity if, if that's a useful thing to do. Um, you know, if you're associating negative traits with masculinity and then enforcing them on the basis of masculinity, it's not helpful. Um, I do believe that masculine characteristics are subjective social constructs. I just think um, we should try to like have positive associations with this idea if we're going to be motivated by it. And I think there's a lot of really positive traits you could associate with masculinity and be motivated by. Um, you know, I don't think it's, it's not like the most useful, I guess, but if it works for the person you're talking to to say, be a man, turn yourself in, it's not like, you know, that's good. You're, you know, you're using this universal trait for, a you know, a quality that matters to that person. Um, okay. Why is gaslighting a word? This person asked. Uh, the answer is because it describes a phenomenon. And like, I know it's a strange word. It's a funny little word, but like, You've never, you know, people have experienced this phenomenon. This is a very common phenomenon. You can call it whatever you want. But the idea of like making someone doubt their perception, um, you know, Walter telling Skylar, we're not in danger. is profoundly gaslighting. I use the term in my video when I talk about Kim and Jimmy gaslighting Cheryl. I say they gaslight a widow by, about her um, late husband having a secret drug addiction. It's probably not the ideal version of gaslight, because they don't have like an ongoing relationship with Cheryl, I guess. It sort of feels a little strange because they're just sort of lying. But it is gaslighting. Um, you know, it's like it's like if you, you know, gaslighting is just a it's a neologism, right? It's like a it's like a new sort of word. But it just, you know, it just represents a phenomenon. You can call it whatever you want. <laughs> they're probably joking. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, it's like, you know, we have abstract phenomena in society. You know, you have to come up with weird words to describe them. Um, um, around two hours, shockingly. Uh, okay, so this person says, my definition of the phrase be a man has always meant feel what you feel, but don't make it other people's problems in the, sense, in the sense of if you're angry, be angry, but don't take it out on your loved ones. 
that is obviously super healthy masculinity. The idea of, and, and it's like, when I, when I make things about universal traits, I'm saying like, you don't have to associate this with masculinity, but if you do, that's great. That's a great association with masculinity. Um, and then this person sort of a different side, simple way to explain the phrase be a man is that for most of human history, it's been uh, situations where it's more beneficial to bury feelings and move on than not hurt your leg in the wilderness. Be a man, get yourself to safety, feeling hungry, be a man and hunt your son died. Be a man. Don't get stuck in the field. Tribe is being attacked by a different. Woman. So I think this is, um, oversimplifying. I think this is oversimplifying. And because at the end of the day, like, they're making a good point, but it, it is oversimplifying. But their good point is that our, they're, they're basically describing the socially constructed nature of masculinity. In certain societies, certain understandings of being a man will be more beneficial, of course. And then in other sort of societies, it's less beneficial. I would argue that in the types of societies that this commenter is trying to describe, there, it's still far more complex and, you know, obviously... Sometimes you you feel your emotions and it leads to you to make good decisions for your community, whether it's small or big and so on. But, um, you know, but it is, uh, yeah, it's, you know, we're not, we're not in those societies. If you're watching this live, live stream, you're not in that society. So, I mean, probably, I don't know. You're not in a society where you need to have such a stripped down version of masculinity. Um, okay. And then these two, in a very similar vein, these two comments point out that, um, I really, really was looking forward to responding to these, okay? So these two comments are responding to my masculinity section. And they're saying that I am wrong to uh, discuss mas to discuss ma toxic masculinity in the way I do because they're saying that I'm attributing toxic masculinity to capitalism. I have not rewatched that section in preparation for this, but I don't feel like I need to. I don't think I'm attributing toxic masculinity to capitalism. In fact, I'm actually not sure I'm specifically talking about capitalism in that line or in that like paragraph because I'm talking about the owners of the means of production and like working and laboring and how like suppressing emotion can be something that's like useful in generating the maximum um, surplus value from a laborer. But that's not specific to capitalism. Surplus value being generated from laborers is not specific to capitalism. That's something that what's specific to capitalism is that the surplus uh, value is being appropriated by a class of capitalists, not, you know, feudal lords and not slave owners and so on. So I, you know, I could be wrong. I'm not like this is not my expertise, but I was not trying to portray toxic masculinity as a, a result of capitalism. I think that, uh, you know, capitalism could reinforce toxic understandings of masculinity and could hijack toxic understandings of masculinity for the further generation of profits for the owners of means of production. But you have owners of means of production in any era of production. It's just that's not, you know, that's not a thing unique to capitalism. And I've gotten some people who are triggered by me even talking about means of production on the video. Um which is very funny to me as if you're like not supposed to even talk about how we produce things. <laughs> but I think, look, I was just riffing. I was just riffing, but like, it's kind of interesting to think like, why does masculinity have this repressive toxic side to it? I just, it's, it really, it, I was trying to grapple with that as just a lay person and just think about it. Why, yeah, why do we, I don't know, why do we, why do we associate this unhealthy thing about pushing down your emotions with, with masculinity? Why not? And okay, and I'll respond to something. I've gotten a few comments. I don't think I had them. A few, a few people commented like, what about toxic femininity? And like, I would reply, sure, that's, I, I think toxic femininity would be like the converse. Like when um, someone who's a woman or who presents as a woman and is perceived as a woman, someone is a woman and they, um, they're made to feel like they're supposed to be passive. They're made to feel like they're supposed to be subservient. That seems like a toxic understanding of femininity. And there could probably be many other versions of that. 
There could be toxic understandings of all kinds of ideas. Of course, of gender roles, there could be. So, you know, but but thinking that I'm supposed to call that out when I'm talking about Breaking Bad seems like a, a little bit interesting. I don't know. Maybe there's room for that. But um, it seems like a show that so explicitly emphasizes um, the way the characters relate to their understandings of masculinity. So... Um, but yeah, no, I was never trying to imply that capitalism is the cause of toxic masculinity. It is really interesting to think about how, like, how about how people's understanding of their own identity and their own gender, um, does like, it, it, it's this thing that can get hijacked by a leader, by a, a, a bunch of leaders, by a class, by an economic system. Like if you, you know, Walter's like insecurity about his, Manliness is part of what made him so liable to being manipulated. And same with Jesse. And, and yeah. Um, I love seeing you talk about capitalist American hegemony and the uh, means of production and its relationship to patriarchy. Very, very affirming to see someone on YouTube talking about these ideas. Yeah, this was a really nice comment. I really like getting... Um, yeah, it's, I, I love all your feedback, everybody, because it's very nice. Um, oh, yeah, this is the, why I wanted to show this. Um, uh, these shows are extremely political, yet its political themes are buried by unreliable narrators, deeply flawed yet sympathetic characters, and a world that feels so lived in its politics are as naturalized and invisibilized as they are often in real modern life. Hey, commenter, you should make video essays. Cause that's a, that's a good point. It is like, uh, the whole, you know, feeling that water is wet when you're swimming in it thing. Um, and like watching a show like Breaking Bad, it's like the show sort of like tricks you into not thinking about, um, it's it, like, it wants you to think about and wants you to not think about how unreliable the narratives are. It's a beautiful dynamic. Um, People don't, oh, this is great. People don't seem to understand a point that has always been clear to me. Be a man is not opposed to acting like a woman. It's opposed to acting like a child. Often the expression doesn't refer to masculinity at all, but uh, to generally acting morally. And I would add to this comment to explain what they're saying also. Acting morally, acting like an adult, acting res responsibly. I actually make this exact point in the masculinity bonus essay for channel supporters on Patreon and YouTube members. It's not a very interesting essay. Um, so if you, you know, but it's just a few extra thoughts I didn't get a chance to fill in. I shouldn't be too down about myself, but it's not. It's just some extra thoughts. It's not really super coherent, but I make this literal exact point that I understand masculinity as what separates an adult man from a child boy. That to me is super useful. I understand some people see more differences between men and women and that's useful for them. I don't know that that's totally invalid and bad it's not really how i see things so i i understand masculinity more as what separates me as a man from a child rather than me uh from uh a woman and it you know that to me is like a more useful and healthy understanding of masculinity um no amount of capital will create a commodity without labor but neither will any amount of labor um, well, yeah, for sure. Capital has to be reinvested with labor to create further capital and to create further commodities. I'm not sure what you all are arguing about, but I love it. I love to see it. I love that people are arguing about the values uh, and uh, of commodities in my chat. Um, I don't think, okay, so this is regarding what we were saying earlier, uh, that he wouldn't kill Jesse, he would just coerce Jesse further, and eventually he would decide to cook for himself. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, but I wasn't, you know, I think he would cook for himself, Walter. But yeah, I was just wondering if he would, you know, tolerate the distress of Jesse. You know. What is that? <laughs> I have too many windows of, oh. Oh, that's someone on Patreon? Wow, that happened earlier too. Um, very cool. Um, you never see, you never hear anyone say, be a woman. Yeah. Well, I think that has to do with the way that patriarchy has functioned in our society. The fact that men have historically taken these leadership roles and felt entitled to take leadership roles for literally generations, for so many hundreds of years to view, like men have viewed themselves as above women in certain, in like so many different ways. So like, it's like, be a man has come to mean like, take this leadership role. I don't know. I'm just riffing, y'all, but that's my opinion. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, yeah. I'm looking through YouTube comments that I thought were interesting. These are a bunch of people telling me a really interesting point. That when I say Walter says, I think, to Hank in the ride-along, that he's not actually trying to hide the fact that he already knows how to cook meth. He's just deferring to Hank's masculinity or Hank's authority and saying, I don't want to big dog you, Hank, and tell you that I know about these chemicals. I just want to defer to you. Yeah, people do say be a lady, though. That's a good point. Yeah, which refers to the misogynistic and I would say toxic version of womanhood, which is like be subservient to a man. So yeah, toxic femininity would be telling someone to be a lady and telling them to be subservient and not, you know, express or embrace their emotions, uh, allow themselves to express themselves. So yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, that's a good point. I totally, totally miss that. Um, But yeah, this is an interesting point. I mean, I don't know. I got tons of fucking comments. People tell me this, but like, I guess I, yeah, I mean, I guess it's not mutually exclusive like he's sort of trying to hide the fact that he's already maybe thought a little bit about the meth more than he would want hank to know he's also sort of just trying to end the conversation just kind of put a little bow on it um, and be like uh yeah don't worry about that yeah don't think too hard about why i knew that but yeah maybe he's also deferring to hank i don't see it as a big thing i guess he is in the back seat hank's driving him around it's like a little bit of a you know, I don't, yeah, I guess he's trying to be respectful to Hank a little bit. I, I, I didn't see that as an overarching motive. It seemed to me like he was trying to hide that he, uh, you know, he had thought about the cook, but this is a fair point and tons of people made it. So, um, so, okay. Next one as a biological engineer exposed to limited chemical engineering, um, uh, education i do not at all find it hard to believe that walter uh would know that phosphine gas would be the chemical byproduct over mustard gas which is not what i was trying yeah i get that he didn't have to necessarily look that up i more i guess i i thought he seemed guilty about knowing it but uh yeah we went over the synthesis process yes for meth just as an example believe it or not in a second year organic chemistry class i believe that i get that oh this this commenter cooks math <laughs> Oh, this commenter definitely cooks meth. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm. If you all need some meth, I would I would hit up this commenter because they definitely cook meth. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um. Okay, so Walter does not believe in luck uh, or chance. He believes it's all subatomic particles colliding. Only variant is how hard will they collide? Yeah, I. That's a really interesting comment. You know, we talk about Walter's relationship to luck. I didn't connect that to. Um, his physicalist, as I call it, his sort of physicalist perspective. That's that's a really good connection to make. Um, I don't know whether I agree he like doesn't believe in luck or chance, but I think, so I didn't really say it clear enough in the video. I don't know whether I'm even right, but like my point is that like part of, part of like, okay, my point is that he doesn't have a healthy relationship to luck. I believe in luck. I believe in coincidences. You can have the belief that there are no such things as coincidences. If that works for you, great. I don't get how that works for people because it seems like that would make it really hard to understand certain things in your life and you'd have to come up with sort of far-fetched explanations for certain things. I think understanding luck and fate as real is actually very healthy and I would argue true, which is why it's healthy. Um, I do think what I was trying to say in the video it was that Walter doesn't really know how to make sense of both the good and the bad luck in his life. And sometimes all that means to make sense of it is just being like, holy shit, luck. Damn. <laughs> um, but I do think that Walter struggles with that. And also he's a character in a show. So <laughs> there's a lot of luck for him to struggle with. Um, but yeah, also variance is how many of them will collide and uh, in what pattern. But yeah. How long did this video take to edit? Good work, man. Thank you. It took a long time to edit. Um, I would say around 50 to 75 hours of editing over the course of a week and a half, um, maybe 100 hours of editing. And that's obviously after gathering all the clips, which took 20, 25 hours. <laughs> you know, you have to gather the clips in real time. Um Yeah, so I, yeah, I mean, the editing process is really wild. And the fact that I got the video monetized, y'all, the fact that I, like, like, I successfully kept the video monetized on my first try. I talked about this on the podcast. Like, the video didn't have any copyright issues. The three, almost three-hour video. 
the first draft, second draft, third draft, like it didn't have any copyright issues on YouTube because I put so much effort into editing. Make, like y'all, <laughs> the editing process is is wild. Like it's really so wild. Like when I'm gathering, if I'm showing one clip from a scene, I'm gathering like the whole scene because when I'm leading up to the clip and, and coming after it, I need stuff from a far ways away from the clip I show to show, but I also need stuff that gels with the shot as it's shown and there's so many other variables I need it to line up. Um, it's, it's really, um, it's really been cool. Yeah, I've made two grand off the video so far in case you're curious. You make about, it's like uh, about $1,000 for every like 300,000 views, 350,000 views. So $2,000 is really great. I mean, is it minimum wage for the time I put in? We don't need to worry about that. It's really cool to make money from making art. So thank you all for watching the video and watching the beginning and end ads in, in depth. But yeah, that is really good and it will continue. You know, I'll get you know, I'll get a few hundred bucks a month for a few months, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very cool to make any money from art. Um, so yeah. Um, dude, I loved your, I watched Breaking Bad after Better Call Saul video. Thank you. I watched the entire thing. Your perspectives are so insightful and amazing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, Uh, and I say a week and a half. I don't remember. I think it was, I think I had already gotten all the clips and then it was about a week. It might've been two weeks, but yeah, it was like every night and, or most nights I had a few things going on some of those nights, but you know, I, there was a weekend, the weekend before I released it. So I released it last weekend, the weekend before last weekend, um, every day, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 10 hours a day editing. <laughs> I just didn't do anything else last week. Uh, maybe one of the nights. No, I think I just edited. So I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't mind it. You have to enjoy the process, like, to some extent. So it's just a, it's a slog. So yeah, but yeah, it's, it's a pretty long video. You think it's above minimum wage? <laughs> Sounds like $12 an hour. That's below minimum wage. I, my idea of minimum wage is not the actual minimum wage. <laughs> my idea of minimum wage is like $20 at least. Um, um, we actually haven't talked about the suicidality thing. I was happy to get good feedback about that. I was nervous about going into the suicidality stuff. I just, it's such a serious subject and I wanted to make sure to do a good job, but I, it just occurred to me as really worth talking about. And I mean, it, Walter really struggles with how he views himself in his life. And I think you have to like, yeah, I don't know. You have to reckon with that as a viewer and it's just something he struggles with. Um, one of the things I've noticed when attempting to compare these shows is that Breaking Bad has hallmarks of the era it was created in. It was one of the first modern single camera character driven slice of life dramas of the time. Look at the pilot of Breaking Bad versus Better Call Saul. Breaking Bad wastes no time in setting up the concept of the show. Yeah, yeah so much happens in the pilot. I feel like if they remade it for the streaming era, Walter may not have cooked meth until the first season finale. You could tell they kind of stepped back on some of that development in a later season. They, they explored the characters in more depth uh, when the show went on. That's a really interesting comment. And yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know about all this stuff. I don't know a ton about like the history of TV and stuff, but like, yeah, that's a really interesting comment. And I mean, yeah, I mean, that's part of why I like better call Saul more. I mean, they just had more freedom to do things how they wanted. And that's part of what made a show that I personally enjoy more. Um, but you know, other people have different temperaments, different mentalities, like, you know, like the approach of Breaking Bad more. So, yeah. Um, yeah, everybody's underpaid. Yeah. We all get underpaid. It's like, it's ridiculous. Even, even I'm underpaid and I, you know, I make more than minimum wage, um, from my work, from my therapy. Uh, weird preference, but I like the old Jeff actor over the new one. New Jeff is a great actor, but I like the way old Jeff played him. So this comment was very confusing to me because the old Jeff, they're obviously talking about Better Call Saul, the, the Jeff recast. But the thing is the Jeff recast, the old Jeff and the new Jeff are identical. They look literally identical. So I don't know what this commenter is referring to because old Jeff and new Jeff are, you cannot tell them apart on Better Call Saul. So I don't know. 
I, yeah, I don't, I don't understand what they could be referring to. Um, now you may be thinking we've been streaming for three hours. You should stop. I have stuff to do that. That might be going through your head right now. You might be thinking, please let me go. Just please stop the stream. Um, I actually have some more stuff I want to talk about. Um, so we're going to take another quick three minute, four minute break where I'm going to use the bathroom, um, fill up my water. Um, and you're all going to just do whatever you want. You can talk to each other. You can, you, you can drink water. You can use the toilet. Um, you can, you can drink water, uh, in the bathroom. You can drink water in the kitchen. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to be back in a few minutes and we'll keep talking and, uh, we don't have a ton more to do, but <laughs> we have some funny stuff coming up and, uh, all right, I won't spoil it. We'll be back in a few minutes. And bye. is on a break. break how's everybody's break doing how's everybody's life doing on the break but does what's therapy know about kid named finger i mean i've asked about it i've asked about kid named finger months ago and i was told like there's nothing like is there even a backstory what is it if there's a backstory, I either forget it or I think I remember someone being like, there's no backstory. <laughs> it's just a meme. There's pretty much nothing to get. Yeah, so I don't even... <laughs> I mean, I respect that. Don't get me wrong. If there's a backstory, tell me. Feel free to tell me because I always assumed there was a backstory. Oh, Patrick Fabian got a cameo from a kid named F Finger, and he doubted that was his... Is that true? <laughs> Is that true? Um. Okay, so... Okay, do you want to watch a video together? So, I found this video called How to Dominate Any Social Situation. <laughs> 
Um, oh, I wish the watch later didn't show up. I could take this off the watch later playlist. Um, you all have recommended different videos to me. There was one that you recommended called um, like why Walter White did nothing wrong. And it was a satire video. That was pretty good. Um, this one I don't think is a satire video. Um, it's by a channel called Charisma on Command. And it's called How to Dominate Any Social Situation with a Picture of these gentlemen. So I'm like really concerned because join over 14,000 members at Charisma University. I'm already, I don't need that. We watch Walter White go from a weak looking pushover to a powerful presence who commands respect. Does he just look weak or do you actually think he's weak? And also that happens in the first... Uh, okay, so Charisma on Command, this video is from last year, okay? This isn't like it's from 2012, okay? This is from last year. We don't have to watch the whole thing, but like, what is going on? This is a joke? Breaking Bad has one of the best character transformations in TV history. We watch Walter White go from a weak-looking pushover to a powerful presence who commands respect. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No, I am the one who knocks. While you definitely don't want to be like Walt in every way, there are four habits you can learn from him to look and feel extremely confident in any situation. Okay, so it's a it's an absurd premise, but you, like, and I'll, I'm obviously going to be criti critical, but like, hypothetically, you can look at any character and you can try to find good qualities. Of course, there are not, you know, there are good qualities to every character. Even Todd, you know, he's kind of patient. But, like, I'm getting a really bad feeling about this. Goddamn right. And even though Breaking Bad is a scripted TV show, all the psychology covered in today's video will apply to your actual life. <laughs> no reason given. First thing Walt did is... No reason given why it'll hold up. Stop looking weak was learned to project confidence with his body language. We see this for the first time when he stands up to a guy who's bullying his disabled son. We see this for the first time in the first episode. I'll mess you up, man. Well, you'll have one shot. You better make it good. What are you Yo, this guy's like 18. And for your girlfriends, you better go. He's kind of patient. Murders child in one second. Okay, that's not the best example. I don't even mean that Todd is patient. I don't know. Better go. Take it. Take your shot. Even though the odds are against him, he projects that he's confident he's going to win. But be careful here. This is an area where you don't want to blindly copy... Okay, what did they just cut to? And also, I love the conversation in the chat where two people are um, disagreeing about labor and value and doing it in a super polite way and nice. That is literally warms my heart. Um, I refuse to let people be jerks to each other in my chat. I love to see people being just like nice, kind-hearted, good people. Um Jack's that he's confident he's going to win. But be careful here. This is an area where you don't... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Am I missing something? Who are these people? Is this from Breaking Bad? I don't want to blindly copy Walt. You won't... Oh, are they friends? ...respect by starting fights or taunting people. Oh, it's stock footage. Or it's other movies. ...just seem like a jerk. And I'm so ignorant. I like don't see enough movies. This is charisma on command. Okay, I mean... I guess this is the type of channels that like young men will often find themselves watching to try to feel more confident and like that's a valid thing to want to be confident so let's just see if we're getting good advice here you might get your ass kicked what you can learn from walt is his eye contact during conflict walt projects massive confidence because in high pressure situations he holds eye contact y'all this is if this is satire my brain is broken and and you all a bunch of people suggested uh this is not satire a bunch of you all suggested um, that I watch that video that I just mentioned a few minutes ago, like Walter White did nothing wrong. And look, I don't want to be a dick. If you like that video, that's all good. I actually didn't really get that sat. Like the satire was too thick and like I didn't, it wasn't the right type of satire for me. The Walter White did nothing wrong. I don't dislike the video. It's funny. If you like it, that's all good. 
but it like wasn't my type of satire and it was kind of interesting for me to reflect watching it um i was just like oh something feels i just don't maybe it's too thick i think too thick is the right word but this is definitely not satire y'all yeah because this is even thicker if you think that i am capable of doing this walt seems to have a pretty I mean, it's just so funny to like go through Breaking Bad and find a clip where Walter makes eye contact and be like, he's learning to be confident. Clear rule for eye contact during conflict. Don't break first. Here's an example. <laughs> but like all these are things like, okay, this one's like whatever, but like this is a horrible thing he did in front of his family. <laughs> Pretty clear rule for eye contact during conflict. Don't break first. Here's an example. Oh shit. Bailey Wilson giving 499, which is the I should name this stream 499. Thank you so much. Leave me alone. 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 Now there's nuance to this. If you never break eye contact, uh, it's so bad with like the not TV on the radio in the background. Contact during conflict, you risk creating more hostility. In real life, any of these situations could easily result in you getting badly hurt. This is why most people make submissive. Yeah, I wish that like teenager just beat Walt up <laughs> like that. I wish that happened in the pilot. Just Walter just got his ass kicked. Okay, we got it. Adjust your body language. Okay. Oh, use po speak slowly and use positive. Y'all, okay, I just want to say young men, young people, people of all ages. If you want to be confident, just be yourself and do good things. When you do good things, you build your confidence. When you do things you're happy about. I, I mean, it's not easy. I'm not trying to make it sound easy, but it's harder if you're trying to like follow rules like this. Build stoic courage. Confident. So how can you actually be more confident in situations that normally make you nervous? And why is it believable to the audience that Walter White can go from a chemistry teacher with no confidence to someone who's able to stay confident while he's surrounded by gangsters ready to kill him? Why don't you start talking and tell me what you want? $50,000. Another fifteen for my partner's. He feels he has nothing to be afraid of. It might not seem like it, but this is actually something we can all learn from, hopefully in a safer, healthier way than cooking meth. Because we're... <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah i mean let's just focus on the not being afraid thing and like i guess let's just focus on the like being confident thing and not look at anything else we're all going to die eventually this is one of stoic philosophy's most important teachings oh we're all gonna die eventually but like Walter doesn't approach that truth in a healthy way. He tries to rush that along a little bit. Memento mori. Remember you will die. This isn't meant to depress you, but to help you build stoic courage to live life fully. If you remember your time on earth is short, it can free you to take the risk, approach the beautiful person in the bar, ask for the promotion, quit the job you hate. Yeah, I mean, the whole premise of this video is uh, off base, but I think about the fact that I'm going to die all the time. I mean, not literally all the time, but most... Most days it'll like occur to me that I'm going to die. <laughs> I don't think that's a bad thing. And I do think it's a big part of mental health is being able to think about, um, you know, your mortality. Um, what does that lead you to do is maybe a slightly more complicated question. Don't be like, are you living life fully by, you know, torturing your family members? Reckless, but live the life you want while you have the chance. Yeah, do they have all these movies as like stock footage on their computer already? Chance. Or? Building stoic confidence can be as simple as setting a phone reminder each morning to meditate on Memento Mori for just a few minutes. Ask yourself, how would you live differently? Yeah, I can't laugh at that. I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't know that I would set a reminder to think about the fact that I'm going to die, but I set reminders for all kinds of stuff. If you knew you were going to die in five years, what about one year? What about one week? You don't have to start living like you're going to die. In yeah, no, accepting your mortality is good for building confidence. It's just a question of like what your confidence is used for. And like, it's kind of use. It's like, yeah, antisocial, like toxic confidence that just causes you to hurt people and yourself and your family is, is you know, uh, less than worthless, I guess. In a week, but it can help you find the confidence to prioritize what's important and stop putting off the life you really want to live. Now, while Memento Mori is the... Oh man, I gotta jump into this value conversation. I'm talking about utility because value is determined by utility. Uh, but there's use value and exchange value. Use value being like, oh, I bought this product, I'm gonna consume it and use it. Exchange value being I'm gonna sell it uh, for a, a, I'm gonna get money for it, that commodity rather than use it. 
the reason Walt can be so calm under pressure. That and like I, I will say I'm reading Capital. I can definitely recommend that. I was reading it today. I'm like 780 pages in, into it. It's, it's really good. I mean, it's not what you think. If you've never read like Karl Marx's writing, it's it's really entertaining. It's also philosophical, but super grounded in like real life. Um, and it just, it definitely raises some really interesting questions. Um, and like, it's hard to understand sometimes, but it still is like grounded and relatable. Um, I would definitely recommend it. it. It makes you think about just like a lot of questions of the economy and like, yeah, yeah, a lot of interesting questions about how we pay workers and what does it mean to be paying them in money that's generated from the work they do. It's like things get very tangled up, and I think it does help to, uh, yeah, to investigate stuff. I mean, you know, you can read criticisms of it as well. Alone wouldn't have helped him survive for long in the meth world, and especially after his cancer goes into remission, Walt definitely does not want to die. You see this in season three. His life is threatened and he does not stay calm. I could just talk to Gus. No. I know I can make him understand. Please, if no. I can talk to Gus, well, I, can, I can convince him, okay? Just let me, please, please, please let me talk to him. Shut up. Shut up. The okay, co- okay. But watch how the power dynamic shifts once Walt sends his partner, Jesse, to kill the new meth cook. Okay, it's so fast. I'm sorry. I know not everybody has to make a three-hour video, but I. it's a little, like... Are these things as connected as they say? This highlights the real reason Walt was able to be fearless for so much of Breaking Bad. He's irreplaceable. He makes the best. They just said Breaking Bad instead of Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad. Meth and everyone knows it. You all know exactly who I am. It's Walt's confidence. So this is like the anti my video. (laughs) Breaking Bad is a fictional show. That dynamic is very real. If your employer or clients think you're... I mean, when I said in my video that like killing those people who were incarcerated was pointless, uh, was not not pointless, was wrong. I thought it was pointless to say that because I thought it was going to be so understood. I did get one or two comments from people like, yeah, I guess you're right. I guess it was bad to kill those incarcerated people or like, you know, disagreeing. And so um, it is good to even point out, yeah, killing Gail, (laughs) not it. Like, you can't justify that. I even said on this stream, like, even killing Domingo, I don't think that's, I don't think you have the right to do that. Someone's trying to kill you. You want to kill them in self-defense. Okay. Uh, um, once that situation is over, no, you don't pick them up in your car and kidnap them. <laughs> um, the next thing, I, uh, so yeah, anyways, I hope this video made us more confident. Be irreplaceable. <laughs> what? for so much of Breaking Bad. He's irreplaceable. For Breaking Bad. For Breaking Bad. He makes the best meth and everyone knows it. You all know exactly who I am. It's irreplaceable skill that give him power. Your employer or clients think you're irreplaceable, they'll do anything to keep you. This is true in a romantic <laughs> partnership as well. The frustrating part for many people is what actually makes someone irreplaceable. It often doesn't seem fair. The hardest worker doesn't always get promoted and the nicest person doesn't always get the most dates. That's because for most people, getting what you want in life is actually a mix of two things, your ability and your ability to make people like you and respect you. That's What about luck? It's the power of charisma. When you have it, the world suddenly opens up. For- Isn't charisma an ability? For you. If that's something you want, you may like our program, Charisma University. It's a- Oh no! You have to say this is an ad. That's like not... You have to say that. You have to put that's an ad in the description. That's an ad. It's a 30 day step by step. Fucking Prager you like charisma you. What the fuck? Guide to massively improving your charisma and confidence. And this is like, we have like fucking a minute left in the video. Past members have said things like, I am way. And then, you you, you know, they'll sometimes give discounts for these testimonials on things. Oh, my Lord. Just like that's get your confidence by like doing good stuff. You don't have to learn from it. Wow. I, I literally think you're supposed to. Like, you need to declare that this is an advertisement if it's like this. 
So I don't, that seems, that seems fucked up. I'm like a fucking, like, I don't know what the right, I'm a nerd about this shit. Like I, if I wasn't on stream, like I'd, I like want to report the video. <laughs> I hate people doing advertisements when they don't make it clear that they do. <laughs> the whole premise is off base. I'm not sure you knew the base was to sell a product. <laughs> that's true. That's true. The premise was on base for that. Okay. This is kind of cool. We're not going to watch like this, too much of this because I want to keep moving on. But this is like how they filmed the explosion and stuff. It's pretty, pretty awesome to see how they did all this. By a bunch of uh, nitrogen. I can't make it smaller, but I can make it bigger. <laughs> Physical effect of, of uh, this big steel door being blown off its hinges by a bunch of uh, nitrogen mortars. Just very cool. I'm not gonna watch it because we gotta we gotta move on. But yeah, very cool. I would check it out. I'm not gonna link it. You can just look it up. I'm just too lazy to link it. Um, now clear your watch history. You'll never be rid of grifting classes. Um, I already watched so much random shit on um, YouTube that like YouTube doesn't even know what to do with me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Oh yeah, it was interesting to watch Breaking Bad. Uh, to watch Breaking Bad as a Better Call Saul fan, to see like Mike just shoot people, <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, he's totally fine shooting people um, nowadays. He definitely got over that, you know. Good for him. He really healed from the trauma and the grief of losing his, uh, you know, son, and then you know feeling compelled to murder the police officers. He really healed from that and has felt fully capable and functional as a as a hitman and, and, and killer. So it's a really good point of personal growth. And, you know, we can all be like, Mike, we can all outgrow the stuff we've been through and we can, um, you know, we can heal ourselves and get back to a place where we're functioning, you know, which yeah, for Mike is shooting people. Okay. Um, I do love Lydia. I know I mentioned that in the video. She is such a perfect representation of like, the the cruelty of just like the status quo and civilization not to sound too pretentious or over the top but like it's like like she's just this like fully she fully passes as like successful and like you know normal civilized upper class and and she's just depraved and has no sense of morality and it does go to show like how yeah, how cruelty can just be kind of like woven into the, I, I don't know, like normal state of things. The banality of evil. Great. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, she's also super neurotic. So maybe I relate to that. Um, um, I did think it was interesting. I mentioned Walt punching the towel dispenser and seeing it's mirrored. And what I what I uh, didn't get a chance to mention in the video is that before he dies, he sees his uh, he's sees his reflection in this thing as well. It's just interesting, you know. It is just kind of interesting. Such a good song. Oh my god. Um. It's such a good fucking song. Uh, so, yeah, very, uh, yeah, I didn't mention Baby Blue. I know. And there were some things I like just didn't feel like going into because I knew they were so worthwhile to talk about. And I was just like, I don't even feel like it. Okay. few more things to talk about. Okay. Um, you know, this website, okay. Um, this website, it's the breaking bad.fandom.com. It's very useful when you're working on video essays. Do you see anything on this page that strikes you as absurd? Do you see anything here that I see someone saying this horrendous site? Okay, good. So I'm not alone. Do you see anything on this page that is <clears throat> just like absolutely ridiculous? <laughs> just 
Just going to give it a second. <coughs> Went down the wrong pipe. So they call it his fucking alias. <laughs> They call it his alias. <laughs> it's not his alias. He's not a he's not going into the game. It's not his alias. He starts to go by the name Flynn. That's not what an alias means. An alias is like a a fake name for the purposes of committing crime. Am I wrong? I I maybe I'm just wrong. I just don't think he you don't call it his alias when <laughs> He changed his name to that. Like, as a kid who just... Like, this just made me so irrationally annoyed. I'm like, why are you calling it his fucking alias? Okay, so... It's just alias. I guess that's what it is. Okay, so that's what it is. This is this is the kind of insights you get from me, though. Okay, so this, this is what you get. Now, next section... <clears throat> Um, I have seen the Breaking Bad gaming memes. Yeah, with like the Donald Trump like AI and stuff. Is that what you mean? Um, or like with the different AIs and stuff. I feel like those are Breaking Bad themed, but you might be talking about something else. Um, <clears throat> lots of good questions and comments in the chat. Um, from an English professor, alias is right denotatively, but not right connotatively. That's interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I'm trans and when I legally change my name, it's now my legal alias. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I guess if, like, if you want, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if you're joking or serious. But if, like, someone wants to consider it their alias, I'm not going to tell them not to. I don't think Flynn would be like, yeah, Flynn's my alias. You know what I mean? <laughs> I think he'd be like, I think in, I think the connotation implies it's not your real name. That's what it implies to me. When, like, if it's your real name, it's your real name. But... That might just be me misunderstanding what the word alias means. Now, <clears throat> no one has asked about this, but regardless, I have good news. The alias is a bit. Okay, I knew it was. I knew it was. Um, I have good news. We, uh, we have... <laughs> so do you remember how we looked at some AI articles? Some AI articles, okay? Now, I should have mentioned this earlier when I said the chatter Laura gave me the name for the um, video. This is not Laura. This is, the, this is a different Laura. This is not the Laura who gave me the name for the video in the chat on the last stream. This is a different Laura. And all the articles say they're by Laura, you know. And they are only about Leave Breaking Bad and Better Leave Call Saul because the... It's a cooking website. I'm, I'm catching you up if you weren't here. We've talked about it on multiple streams. It's a cooking website that is run by AI. So they think that Nacho and all the characters are related. And so uh, to cooking. Thanks, S. Smith McGrath for the 199. Best channel on YouTube. Wow. That's ridiculous. I mean, people leave comments like that sometimes. And I'm like, holy crap. That's honestly crazy to think about. Um. I just, there are so many more AI articles. It's wild to me. And I have such an interest in this. And I, I, I am going to put out a video in the next year or two about AI. Uh, it's going to be a massive one. Um, and it's not going to be broad. It's going to be specific. It's going to be a rabbit hole, but it's going to be a massive rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this shit is so funny. I mean, like Breaking Bad, the smartest drug lord. And then it's from December 16th as well as November 3rd. Tag nachos. <laughs> um, it's like everything is like partially correct and, and partially wrong until it's like completely wrong. Hector is admitted to the hospital with angina, and when confronted by Nacho, he attempts to kill him by replacing his nitroglycerin with ibuprofen. Like, I think we read some of these also, so we're not going to, like, read all these. But I just wanted to remind you that these exist. Why was Nacho sad? In Better Call Saul, 
Nacho was sad because he didn't have any friends. He was also the last to be picked for teams in gym class, and no one ever wanted to sit with him at lunch. What? Both Nacho... I mean, there's, like, some truth to all this stuff, too. It's it's really fascinating. And, like, this is the future of a lot more media websites. I mean, this is just some random website, mexicali dash blue.com but a lot of media websites use ai like there's this i was reading an espn article and it doesn't say it anymore but it said before that it was by um this thing called data scribe which i looked up and is an ai based uh thing like data scribe sells content automation tech and so it doesn't say it anymore but it said by data scribe before and then it's just like like ai can just write and yeah warriors got knocked out yesterday kind of funny um a lot of people happy about that um but it is it is very interesting how ai can function with um with writing and with all types of different art and how it is a big part of our life and will you know and automation you know we've talked about labor automation will will always you know technological advances will always change how we how we are employed and how we employ people and so it is really worthwhile and necessary to examine any big technological advance like machine learning generative learning ai and so on um because yeah it affects all if it affects a lot of people um um (laughs) this is so ridiculous this has street the stream has been so long um and I think with AI, yeah, so like, like, so look, okay, this website, like, the determination of Nacho, a strength and a weakness, and then this is a photo of, I mean, I literally, literally can't even tell you. I think it's a play on Nacho Libre. Nacho is a very determined young boy. Why didn't I, oh my God. I did not notice this before just now. What the fuck is going on? Why is that a photo of Gary V? (laughs) What? I mean, is it because of Nacho's last name being Varga? This this site is MexicaliBlue.com. Here, let me link. I mean, that's Gary V. I mean, it he kind of has a similar look to to Michael Mando. I feel like maybe I'm just saying that because of this. Is Nacho referenced in Breaking Bad? Varga, who appears in Breaking Bad as Michael Mando's character, did not appear. (laughs) However, he appears briefly as himself in the season two premiere. (laughs) Better call Saul. (laughs) It's just everything's wrong about it. Oh, wow. It's just really beautiful. And then these are all articles by Laura. Why is Nacho on the run by Laura? It's just, you know, you got to really think about this. It's really interesting. And then like you, okay, okay, this is, this is funny. How the fuck did I even find this? I was doing like research for some stream or some video or something. And I just typed in some question related to Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. Better Call Saul. And I found this website. The first article I found, I can tell you the name. It was like, uh. It was something like the morality of Walter White. You can find it on the previous stream. It was the morality of Walter White or like the, de- no, 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 no. It was the decision not to kill. And then colon something about Walter White and Gus Fring. And I was like, that's crazy. This has got to be AI. What the hell is going on? Um, and, uh, <laughs> okay. So this is the, we, a few more, a few more things to show you with this. Okay. Devastated family seeks answers after dog is tragically shot by neighbor. I'm sorry. That's not funny, but I, it's a photo of Nacho Libre. The article comes out on two different dates. Nacho was a much loved family dog. I don't know what is going on, but at some point it turns into Nacho from Better Call Saul. And then it says he's shot by Gus Fring. 
Oh, he is. Actually, that's true. I'm sorry. I forgot. No, that is right. He is shot by Gus Fring's people, not by Gus Fring. This article contains spoilers as well as discussion of suicide. Hey, good for you for giving a content warning. AI can give a content warning. So what I wanted to show you, okay, at the end of this article, they link a video. And I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I'm like, wait, wait, what? So we click on it. Obviously, we want to watch on YouTube, okay? And it's, <clears throat> so this is from the AI website. It's a 104K channel called Movies Vibes, okay? Get ready for this. The title of the video is, If Nacho Didn't Kill Himself in Better Call Saul, There Won't Be... There won't be Breaking Bad, here's why. No colon, no punctuation, grammatical errors, it's clearly by AI. It's also, does anyone notice what's going on yet? It's also a huge spoiler. You put a spoiler like that in your title and people are pissed off. You have a 100k channel, you're getting... You're getting hundreds of thousands of impressions, if not millions of impressions on your thumbnail, and you put a huge spoiler in your title. So people don't even get to fucking choose whether they get it as a spoiler. Now, people were mad. I looked at this. First, I commented, what the fuck is going on with this video slash channel? I'll show you what I meant by the video. Um... Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, there's a lot of people getting mad at the AI pronunciation. Um, there's a lot of people just responding to the points as if it's a normal video. And then... Um, this video is an example of why removing dislikes is a bad idea. Um, I disagree, but I can respect your opinion. It's not a person, so you don't have to... Um, yeah, I'm sorry. There's there's a bunch. Um, there's there, there was a bunch of people getting mad about the spoilers, but oh, this person says he didn't die. Is that before it came out? Thanks for putting a spoiler in the title. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Yeah, way to put a spoiler in the video title. Spoilers in the title. Um, so it's like. Really, really rude, but an AI, I guess, can't know that, right? But yeah, check out the video. Cycle sacks of shit. Nacho chose to do things his own way in Better Call Saul Season 6, but in doing so, he came close to altering the story of Breaking Bad. Y'all, tech, tech innovation is so cool. Like, I should just make videos with this. Like, I could talk about Nacho, and, like, it would just be so good. In a big way. Prove it! Better Call Saul Season 6 proved that Nacho Varga, Michael Mando, could have ended the whole plot of Breaking Bad with just one carefully played. So, like, is the whole channel AI? Like, what's going on? I don't care, I guess? But it's uploading a lot. It's uploading every six hours. It's uploading multiple times a day about shit I've never heard of. And that's the world we live in, and it's in every medium. It's video essays, it's music, it's writing, it's it's painting, it's it's lyrics, it's and it's only going to be more and more and I'm not even complaining. We just need to be aware of it and we need to be critical about it. It's something real. Um quantity over quality. So <laughs> yeah, the the Mexicali Blue AI website has some new articles by someone besides Laura. Okay, Mike Preston with no image. Mike Preston is starting to get in on the action. So Laura's in some hot water because Mike Preston's got a few really good articles: the future of dining, how technology is, two Mexican snacks to try in casinos, eat delicious and don't distract from top games. Another great article by Mike Preston. So yeah, Mexicali Blue, great website. Um, as I showed on the last stream, you can watch the last stream if you don't remember. Um, if you try to contact them, the email does not work. Um, um, do they still have? Do they still have the email? Contact. Yeah, it's not even spelling the name of the website correctly, and it doesn't work. 
please be concise as we do get a lot of emails. I don't believe you. I still don't believe you. And uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, Laura, you got to watch out for Mike uh, Preston or whatever his name is. Oh, Laura's back to writing some articles though. They've been writing some new articles. Is Cozy Shack Flan worth worth the hype? I've been wondering that a lot, actually. I've been wondering if Cozy Shack Flan is worth the hype. Um, that's actually been keeping me up at night, and I it's been really a huge problem in my life. Um, I've been totally just like missing a lot of responsibilities. Um, and yeah, last thing about AI with this uh, this WGA strike going on. This is from the specific document released uh, from the union, the Writers Guild, um, showing what their demand was from the Producers Association regarding AI. They asked that they regulate use of AI on MBA covered projects. I don't know what MBA is, probably something with the union. Um, AI can't write or rewrite literary material, can't be used as source material, and MBA covered material can't be used. Okay, I got to look up MBA. MBA meaning WGA, sorry. Minimum basic agreement, the collective bargaining agreement. So, you know, you could say AI should be able to be used in some projects. And I feel like this isn't saying that it shouldn't. It's just certain uh, MBA, you know, union projects. Wait, did I just freeze? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, the computer I'm, what, I'm like checking the stream on that I'll have it playing on, like just totally uh, burnt out. Anyways, so um, the producers guild, or the producers association, re rejected the proposal um, because, like AI and technological advances like that, will be used by the owners of the means of production to make as much money as possible. What I was reading about in Capital today is like when surplus value is appropriated by the owners of means of production. Only, you know, part of that will be consumed by them. Of course, they buy things and so on. Part of it will go back to reinvest. Um, but like when it goes back to reinvest and it's used as cap capital and it's, you know, that's what capital is. You take surplus value, you reinvest it and you create more capital from it. But when it's done in that way, part of that goes into wages, but a diminishing part of it is what is what the, the author was arguing. Um, and like uh, an increasing part of the surplus value that's uh, accumulated goes towards the means of production like AI, like technology and stuff like that. And then a diminishing uh, proportion of it goes towards wages. And so that's what technological advancement allows for is increasing amounts of capital, increasing at increasing rates, going towards the means of production and uh, that being a constant amount of capital, whereas variable capital, the capital paid for towards wages, which varies with, I guess, um, cost of living and other stuff like that, that sort of cost goes down, meaning, you know, how much do I have to pay writers for this project when I can get other people to do things and blah, blah, blah. So I hope you enjoy hearing me give my uh, little take on things. Um, I think we're close to the end here. Does anyone have any thoughts? We have a few more, I have, a, I have one or two more questions um, before I let you go. Um, oh yeah, one thing about Walter's pride. Just imagine Walter doing a slip and fall. Wouldn't that be like the funniest thing ever? Imagine Walter doing a slip and fall. <laughs> could you imagine Walter? <laughs> like he has, like he could never, that's such a fundamental difference between him and Jimmy. Like he could never do a slip and, I guess maybe he could exploit weakness or an appearance of weakness in, in various ways, but it's very hard to imagine him doing that. Um, yeah, this. I, so we're going to be ending relatively soon, but this stream will be available. I'll just send a link right now so you all know. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Before I even end, I just want to say thanks for watching. A lot of people gave me money, which is just wild. Thank you so much for contributing real currency. Um, the, video, the stream will be available there at this link. I'll spam the chat a little bit. Um... Yeah, so go subscribe to the side channel. There's a new video of me making beats. You might not like it. It's super different. Uh, but I will. The stream will be there as soon as I stop. Um, the stream, I think I'm going to keep it public on the main channel too, just so people can enjoy it. Um, this has been super fun, and you all are really great. A few things before we go. Everybody, tell me about one thing you like that has nothing to do with Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. Tell me one thing you enjoy. You already have. Some of you had, have already shared nice things you're interested in. But I want to open that space. What's something you enjoy besides, you know, has nothing to do with the Gilliverse?
Pro Wrestling, Lego. Oh, Esoteric Videos, thanks for the five bucks and one penny. Oh, I see what you're doing there. <laughs> Thank you very much. Everyone check out Esoteric Videos. They make really good videos as well. Writing, Vaporwave, Planes, My Cat. Um, drawing. Wow, Carol, thank you for $10. Oh my gosh, nice dog. Tell your dog I say hi. Thank you so much for the kind words about my channel. I hope you enjoyed the other stuff. Hockey, guitar, taquitos, video essay, <laughs> retro video games. Um, uh, very cool. Leave me alone. Leave um, me alone. Leave me alone. Yeah, I like chess. I like, uh, yeah, writing, reading. I've been, you know, obviously trying to learn more about how the economy works and stuff. Um, I like playing guitar. I like making music on the computer. I like therapy. You know, someone says I like therapy. Um, yeah, it's fun to fun to talk about all this stuff. We're going to do, you know, this channel, I'm hoping to have it for many years. And I'm hoping to continue this channel. You know, obviously, we're going to have a lot more stuff to talk about. Um and, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I've obviously just gotten this huge for like really huge audience, uh, through Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And I'm, I'm so grateful to, to have something I'm interested in that so many people care about as well. And, you know, and many of you will stick around for the ride and we'll talk about some other subjects as the, as the time goes by. Am I reading any fiction? Currently, I don't think I'm reading any fiction. I'm not reading enough at all. I have been trying to read more research articles too to expand my knowledge. Um, last fiction I read, what even was it? I'm trying to look around because I'm so like... I don't think I've read fiction in a while. I can't even think of the last fiction I've read. But I have a few videos about some fiction like um, the Organs of Sense video. Simply Snaps, we missed your presence. Everyone check out Simply Snaps. She was my uh, help, very helpful script consultant with this video. Um, and Snaps, you can watch the whole stream. We missed your company, but I'm sure you'll enjoy uh, checking it out later potentially. Um, but yeah, I guess you have like a social life or something. That's fucking weird. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to read more fiction for sure. Oh, last fiction I read was probably Liberation Day by George Saunders. It's short stories. He, George Saunders is the my favorite living writer. Um, he's really like even better than Kafka. He's so good. Um, um, so does anyone, next question before we end, uh, mental health subjects that people would be interested in videos about. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but if you have any, are there any mental health subjects you would be interested in seeing a video about, or do you have any questions about mental health related subjects? Just wanted to throw that out there and something you can let me know. Um, anything, you know, any thoughts you have about that. Um, yeah, there's a lot. I really want to cover a lot of a lot of different things. It's so cool to have a platform, y'all. I never, I really never thought I would have like a platform. <laughs> Narcissism. Wait, what's your favorite thing by Saunders? Um... I mean, literally everything he's written is so fucking good. Liberation Day, his newest book of short stories, is a fucking amazing. I'm just going to reread it probably like in the next few weeks. I love it. Um, inability to let go of guilt, psychosis. Yeah, these would be really... I'm trying to learn more about psychosis. Munchausen by proxy, very important subject. Boundaries to therapy, why people don't want to go. That would be a good... I want to do more stuff about therapy. Limerence, Abigail, check out my video on when Nietzsche wept. I actually didn't even know the word limerence before then. And I believe I go into it in some depth. Check out my video on when Nietzsche wept. It's my video is called uh, when Nietzsche wept, I laughed. How did I decide to become a therapist? That would be a good topic for a video. Basically, it's like I just like talking to people and needed to have a job. Um, but, you know, I could probably spin that into a video. Um, Wow, lots of really good points. I really hope that this stream doesn't have any copyright issues so that the live chat replay works and we can all enjoy um, all your really good comments. Um, cultural competence with clients is a really important subject. Yeah, they call it cultural humility nowadays too. Uh, a little bit. Oh, wow, you all are saying so much uh, really cool stuff. Um, you've been reading The Time Machine. Holy shit. <laughs> Real therapist reacts to wedding fail videos. 
Oh man, yeah, y'all are really saying so many cool stuff. Aging as a young adult, transition from child to young. So, okay, R- really great suggestions. Really great suggestions. And yeah, I mean, this has been so much fun. I'm gonna, you know, if you if you want to support the channel or just like stay more up to date with whatever my thoughts are, if you really like hearing my thoughts about things, to a you know significant extent like i do this weekly podcast i'm gonna do do an episode tomorrow it's just the verbal journal i just talked to myself um no worries you're not missing anything but like if you want to check it out with the patreon and the youtube members you know you could do a dollar on the patreon youtube members i think it's three dollars i'm not you know you don't have to you're not really missing anything if you don't buy it but if you do like hearing my take on things and you can also like that that way maybe like uh i don't know some of this some of these great suggestions that people are mentioning in the chat I won't get the chance to really talk about for a long time. So if it is important to you, um, you know, you could always like, you know, uh, connect with the podcast, the discord, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, uh, yeah, going to a therapy as a therapist would be a great subject. I've you know, certainly gone to therapy, uh, many times myself and yeah, you should never go to a therapist if they've never gone to therapy themselves. That would be strange. I don't think therapists have to always go to therapy. You know, no one has to like always be going to therapy, but yeah, if they've never tried it, that would be bizarre. Um, anything else before we go? So everyone have a really good rest of your night or your day, depending on where you are. Um, this has been super fun and I've enjoyed your uh, company and you all are really nice. Honestly, I don't, I literally didn't hide one person from the, like no one was weird or anything. That's actually, do you realize that's kind of rare? Like, so give yourselves a round of applause for being nice and cool. Um, you know, say goodbye to each other. I am planning on watching some new shows and making videos on them, but it's going to be a little while. Um, um, <laughs> I personally wouldn't let a surgeon give me breasts unless they've also been given breasts via surgery. <laughs> yeah, that's valid. That's valid. Um, uh, yeah, thank you so much, y'all, for hanging out. I mean, I'll just say it again. Like, this new video is just, like, I'm so lucky to even be able to live in a time when, like, I can just, like, work super hard on something and so many people can see it. It's really amazing. And you all are super nice, and uh, I appreciate you all listening to my thoughts. And, uh, yeah, lot, lots of more creativity to come. And, hey, I encourage you all to, you know, I- express your own creativity. <laughs> One feet. Fuck. I've like sobered up from the time when I said one feet also. This stream has been so long that I've actually sobered up. Um, yeah, so yeah, thank you. Thank you for all. Uh, thank you all of you for um, being here and I hope you continue to enjoy the videos on the channel. If you haven't checked out the other videos on the channel, there are a lot of other videos on the channel. I know how it is. Sometimes you don't, you know, sometimes you like certain videos by a creator and you're like, you know, no thanks on the other ones. And that's valid. And I respect that. Um, and uh, with that being said, be good. And uh, bad therapist might be a good topic. There's also a really good uh, video on that by, I believe they're called Neurotransmissions is the YouTube channel. What's my name? Exactly. That's exactly correct. All right. Bye, everybody. And uh, yeah, have a really good time until I connect with you again or you listen to my next video, uh, which is, uh, you know, maybe soon. Who knows? (laughs) Maybe not. (laughs) Okay. Bye.